Hello, everyone. Hello, Amender. Ha. So Hi, we have a little something different for you guys this week. Uh, no, like, AI story, no fun and fuckery in that sense, because we got to do a little fun thing. We had a little field trip over to uh, On the Spectrum podcast, where we did sort of a dual episode, but they kind of, like, hosted us over there. Um, so you guys get to hear that on our show uh, this week. So really, this is just a hi, we're here, it's us, but on somebody else's show, and y'all get to hear it. And uh, that's it. That's all I have. Amender, thoughts before we let the people listen to the episode? Uh, yep, so it won't be our usual fare. Um, we won't have an AI story, we won't have Mad Lib, so, but it'll be yeah. about two hours uh about two hours of um on the spectrum yeah. podcast hosting us so yeah, hopefully you, you guys, guys enjoy that four whole hours of us this week what is happening poor amanda's <laughs> brain oh god poor, poor <laughs> anyway, things uh enjoy the episode guys here it is a sneak peek at what's coming up next there's no well let's yes. have a conversation about it it's you've immediately said something i've immediately passed a judgment on what you said based off my own personal perception of the words that came out of your mouth right. and i have not bothered to follow up on what did you mean by that how can we have a greater discussion maybe right. there's something for me to learn here it's just immediately you are passed judgment upon Welcome to On the Spectrum Podcast. My name is Nick. And I'm Steven. And as I always do before every episode, uh, me and Steve do not presume to be experts of anything. At Fuck, I can't do this in that fucking voice. Fuck this. Welcome to On the Spectrum <laughs> Podcast. My name is Nick. And I'm cutting all that out. <laughs> and as I always do, me and Steve do not presume to be experts of anything. Absolutely nothing. We're just two human beings who happen to be on the spectrum and happen to be highly opinionated. And if you like, dislike, argue, think we're assholes about anything, please leave a comment on any social media platform, including Spotify, that I'm hoping, God, you're watching this on. Now, today, we have two special guests with us. Well, we have guests with us today, uh, <laughs> one of which we had on our, our show a couple weeks ago, and her podcast partner is with us as well. They are the Neurodivergent Convergent Podcast, Nikki and Amanda. Conjunction, welcome. What's your function? You've been yeah. dying to fucking Hi. say that, haven't you? Hi. Great to be here. <laughs> Every Hi, time everybody. I hear Neurodivergent Convergence, I just think conjunction, junction. Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> Fuck. That's School fine. We'll take it all the way back. Mm -hmm. Next, are you going to oh. sing all about what makes I a bill? I understood that reference. Oh, good, yes. good. And you I'm got that reference. Bail. Good. I'm, I'm glad Steve was bail. able to make one for you. And I'm sitting <laughs> on Capitol <laughs> Hill. He actually oh is singing God. that motherfucker. <laughs> all right. Oh my God. All right. So, uh, uh, how's everybody been? Great. Oh, grand. Great. Wonderful. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good, Steve? but burnt out as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. That too. Burnout fucking sucks. Who are you? Yeah. Uh, well, we already went over my shit. I mean, I, uh, last episode we just recorded on Sunday, and yeah. I just come back from Florida. Yeah, this is my first week back here. Yeah, and how, how was Florida? Did you get anything great? Did you visit any wonderful places? I don't know. Blur. So you're very, uh, very hulked out today. Yep. You got your Hulk Hogan shirt. Yeah, I'm not a bi as big of a wrestling fan as you are. That's but, true. I'm actually a huge fan of wrestling. But I, I. When I, I grew up, I used to watch Hulk Hogan. I, yeah, because when I was yeah. a kid, that's when I watched. So yeah. I like all the like 90s and uh -huh. 90s wrestlers. Absolutely. So. Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. I watched yeah. during that era. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, yeah. Ric Flair, yeah. Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker, the Road Warriors. Sting, Undertaker Sting was one of my favorites. He's been yeah, going. I he really could. Stone like Austin. I could do Stone Cold Steve Austin. There you go. That was a little after I stopped watching, but yeah. he was still the kind of in that era. Like mid nineties, right? Well, kind of. Well, he actually started in the late eighties. Uh, actually, one of his first characters for uh, WWE, he was the ringmaster. Uh, he he worked alongside uh, Ted DiBiase in his uh, uh, faction, and uh, he was the ringmaster. And like, he had really short hair, and he had this little like coat looking fucking thing. Stone and, coat. And, but, he, <laughs> but he didn't last very long as that character. And then uh, he went to ECW for a little while, got super good on the fucking mic. And then when he came back, they basically made him, or at least if I remember the time frame correctly, then they basically like kind of created the stone cold character but a lot of that character was literally him just not giving a fuck anymore and he was just like i'm gonna whoop your ass and but that's like who he is as a human being right and actually um 
on his uh, Broken Skull Sessions uh, podcast that he was doing for a little while, he actually said one of the things that makes damn good characters is when the character is truly you, but magnified. And I forget who he was talking to, but it was another guy who who had a really good character, really good career. And the guy, other guy goes, yeah, I did 30 or four. Oh, he was talking to Kevin Nash. Uh, I did a ton of characters before I came to WWE as Diesel. But Diesel was just kind of who I was. I was that guy who just kind of hung out with people and was kind of quiet. But when I said something, I said it well. And and Stone Cold goes, yeah, that was your best character. Didn't you also play Oz? And they showed a picture of him and he looked real fucked up like. And he, uh, w, I'm going to stop talking wrestling now. Yeah, so okay. our topic we, we for today. A, you need a podcast with my husband. That's what you need. Yeah. Because you well, and my husband like, could talk about this for, for 300 years. He is, he is literally mm-hmm. like that is his special interest. And oh. I, I think he, you and him would make a, an awesome wrestling show. Like you could do a nice. whole, he's been wanting to do a YouTube channel with somebody about it. So really? like, I don't need to talk. Because oh, I feel like that might, totally yeah, do it. that might be a fucking thing, man. He's so into the wrestling history. Like he could literally tell you everything from like the very and, first and wrestlers. Talk. Yeah. And he can talk. So you're like, yeah. y'all, y'all, I don't know how you would never stop. It'd be like a five hour long episode each time. So wrestling is very offensive to me. It's offensive. To, <laughs> tell me more. Well, yeah. uh, so today, is, is it track. offensive because they put on little tiny outfits that barely cover their junk or is my, it because they put the women in smaller? You know, outfits? My mother used to love watching wrestling when I was younger because she liked seeing all the. Yeah. All the men in tight outfits. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm not surprised. Around, triggering. Hugging each other. It's triggering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's triggering mm-hmm. to watch it's grown men him. grab each other. I can only imagine how no, much you hate gay clubs. Because it's reminding him of his mother oh. sitting there watching. Oh, there you go. Sigmund Freudian over here. That's right. So. Uh, so today we have the neurodivergent divergent podcast and we were going to talk about being, um, didn't I already fucking offensive? Say that? Yes. We're yes. going to talk, talk, we're going to talk about that. Being yeah. Because as autistic people, a lot of times people find things that we say or do to be somewhat offensive, but there's also kind of a broader cultural context of yes. just like yes. PC culture and like what you can and can't say and you know, all that type of Which shit. even in our community, that shit gets fucking weird. <clears throat> Because like the language itself, like just the things that we call ourselves, right, has altered so much just in five years. Just in the last five years, there's been like three iterations of what you call the autistic people who are able to hold jobs kind of and hold relationships kind of like, like I don't want to s- low functioning. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then Asperger syndrome was before high function. And then there was high function. And then now it's level one. But even some people don't want to have the levels they want to have. Well, just low support needs. Well, yeah, but that's what all that shit fucking means. Like, that's what it's always meant is that those people of that level, like, or, or that designation needed less assistance than others. Like I, that's Most offensive, people, you son of a bitch. Well, but they do. They don't like I don't need somebody to make sure I don't jump out of a fucking bedroom window in the middle of the night. Listen, I don't appreciate your attitude and I expect you to wipe my ass for me later. OK, Thank so you. see, clearly Steve is a level two. He needs someone to wipe his ass for. I can do everything else. Uh, I just can't wipe my own ass. Right. Like every he's good every other way. He knows how to touch himself. Well, just not in the backside. So. Mm-hmm. It's, he needs another man to do that for him. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. He needs another. Well, only a man is going to know how to wipe another man's asshole. <laughs> oh, God. And, it, and it has to be. I prefer to only use <laughs> yeah. shop rags. So, shop, shop rags. And okay. we wash them and reuse them. Oh, God. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Or like the blue mechanic paper towel. Yeah. You know, that, that yes. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. I'm sorry, buddy. It didn't quite come out in the wash. Got a little it's grease on so there. It's not so bad, but occasionally I find pieces of corn in the lint trap. So. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, I don't, I don't remember eating corn. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature's colon cleanser. Oh, God. That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, God. Um, All right, it's going to be one of those days. It is really going to be one of f- those fucking days. But the cool part of one of those days is clearly people are going to hear that we're just making a lot of jokes, which is a good Speaking idea. Speaking of offensive. But I would also like yeah. to mention that we're also monopolizing the podcast because today, everybody, we are two people. Like we said before, they also have a podcast because today's episode is actually for both of our shows. So I don't think me and Steve being typical white males should monopolize all the time. Ladies, what do you think about the offensive thing? Good. Um, I'm glad you have a lot of thoughts on that. So. <laughs> I just don't know who is talking first. I'm Listen, waiting, I always and you wonder why you make so 20 waiting. cents on the dollar. Oh, God, he yeah. said it. Uh, so 
Here's the interesting Why? part. Like me and Steve has no problem talking over each other. And the both of you were super, super, super polite to the point of like dead air. Right. Mm-hmm. You guys were like, oh, Nick gave it to us, but I, I don't want to step on her toes. And you both said it mm-hmm. in your own heads to each other. I apologize yeah, for the sexist joke. Her. I don't think that women should make 23 cents less an hour. Okay? <laughs> don't. Did, let did it. you get we're that upset by that? For shit. Okay, so we're not this, apologizing for shit in here right, today. We're not, because right. that's the so, whole point of this episode. We're not exactly. apologizing for what we do. So say. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put. Oh, I was actually gonna put out. Amanda in charge of Steve, but then her phone yep. fell, and I'm like, she's not responsible <laughs> enough to make her phone stay up. So you know what? Amanda's in charge of Steve. So Amanda, country, if Steve goes too far in a joke, you're responsible to tell him. Nikki, you can try to tell me I went too far, but I'm not gonna believe you. So yeah, I know. There we go. So um. So offense, your opinions, ladies, and let's start with because clearly somebody has to give one of you permission to go first. Let's go with Amanda, because Nikki, you had a whole episode just to yourself. So Amanda, what's your opinion about the offense thing and about the tism being involved? Um, yeah, I think it can be a little um like people are easily offended these days. Like I I have one particular story from work when back when I was a teller. I made a joke there uh, on the front of the tether line. There was three desks. I made a joke that I, I was on the very left side. There was someone in the middle and then someone on the very right side, me being white on the left side, there was someone that was mixed in the middle and then someone that was black on the right. And I made a joke of, Oh, we have like an ombre effect going on up here. <laughs> and that, I got a talking to, um, about that. They're like, you can't really say things like that. I'm like, I can't point out the fact that I'm the lightest person here. We have a middle, like, like you know, a slightly darker person than darker Listen, person. Listen, you're that. a horrible I can't person. Point that out. I know. Awful. Absolutely awful. But I just came up like, I just, I just came up with an offensive joke right now. Yeah, yeah, like, literally, so I, I had to stand there and choose which level of culture <laughs> I want. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> Nick, Nick and I, Nick and I uh, went no out culture, for... No uh, culture, a little bit of culture, a hell of a lot of culture. Nick and I went yeah. out to get some sandwiches before recording yeah. the podcast. Yeah. And I know that Nick is a big supporter of Palestine because he, oh. on his sandwich, he had lots of hummus on it. <laughs> Oh, oh, God. God. oh, no. <laughs> Wait, you didn't know that's where he was going with that? Come on. Had, I was going to think had hummus a all over joke, sandwich. But okay. Oh, what, that, it's not, it's not called hummus? So? What's it called? Hummus. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Hummus. Yes. So, not yeah, hummus. Sorry. Hummus. Oh. Easily, yes. easily, easily mixed up. Yeah. Easily yeah. Mixed up. Uh, we what's the difference, so what's the difference between a chickpea and a lentil? What's the difference between a chickpea and a lentil? I've never had a lentil on my face. Oh, God. <laughs> Got the golden shower over here. I have not. That's, I haven't actually had the her, her Trump either. likes those it's too. It's just a her joke. Trump likes those too. Oh, You're in good company, sir. Oh, we are so God. canceled. This no, is no, 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 no. Like, I, if y'all ever heard the we very canceled. first episode we ever had, if we didn't get canceled from that, or we didn't even get fucking bad comments. Did you hear our first episode? Absolutely. No, our actual it. first episode. We had our first episode up for, only, I think it was only four months. Are you a true fan, Nikki? Are you a true fan? I don't know. I just started listening like not even three weeks ago, but okay, I've already so binged the whole thing. There's, so a, there's no way you did because about two months ago, okay. maybe three months ago, I, I said to Steve, look, man, I, I went back over some of our episodes and we got to cut two or three of them because the audio was garbage as well. Like there was yeah. technical issues to it too. So we should probably get rid of them for that. But our very first episode, there was there we there was something said at the very beginning just because I made a lot as, of offensive jokes. Right. Um yeah. and, and they went too far to the point that once we educated ourselves about the community a little bit more, we realized that it just it didn't work no more, right? Gotcha. Um so we got rid of that episode altogether. But yeah, we we know we can go a little far. But if nobody canceled us from like the first 10 seconds of that fucking episode. You guys never good. heard that chickpea like, joke oh, before? You're in the clear. No, I've, oh, I've heard it from you. Oh, I've okay. never heard the chickpea joke from anybody else. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. we know what he does in his free time. Yep, you're a yeah. special case, sir. Yes, he is. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, no, anyway, I'm your a special thoughts, case? Amanda, let's... Any yeah. more thoughts on this topic? I would yeah, like come to on. know. Um, <laughs> yeah, just basically that, like, the fact that, the fact that I got in trouble for just pointing out the fact that we're different skin mm. colors, apparently, can't, mm. it just... It just blew my mind because it was just, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I remember, I was, I remember crying, but I was crying out of anger, not out of being, like, not by being sad, but being called out. I'm like, how right. do you not, I was like, that was a hilarious joke. Y- you know, fuck you for not thinking that was funny. So, but yeah. the whole, like, I say things all the time, like, I'm sarcastic as fuck. And like, 
even, but luckily I now have a boss. I did not have a boss before that understood me and my humor. Mm -hmm. um, so like every time, everything, a single thing I said in a joke, she would just take absolutely seriously my last boss. But now my current boss, she's like, she's like, oh yeah, I totally get it. She, and then she mm. like joked right back at me. Like I had a boss, my boss yesterday was like, I'm feeling fucking petty today. I'm like, you go right ahead, ma'am. I'll be right there with popcorn being petty with you. Let's just go ahead. And there you go. It. Rock and roll. So, it, so it, yeah, the whole, the whole being, yeah, go ahead. What? 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 Oh, I thought someone was saying something. No. Um, but yeah, the whole being offended easily. Like, I feel like I have to censor myself mm. a lot of the time. Like, granted, I'm not be like, let's just say racist and sexist and, you know, horrible things all the time. It's just the fact that right. I have to tailor my humor. Yeah. You know, basically, no. depending on who I'm around. And, and, and that's... so, because. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, keep going your oh, thought, because okay. I'm going to partially yeah. interrupt every five seconds because I have an inability no, to shut not. the fuck up. Uh, you're that, more than welcome to just keep Nikki. talking. Um, <laughs> but, well, I was, um, was going to say that you're right, though, because this conversation isn't about being able to say racist and sexist and, and fucking bigoted uh, prejudice shit. It's literally moments like you're talking about. You pointed out a fucking fact that was in front of you. Right. Like mm -hmm. it was an observation you made. It's not like you said, look, they're darker than me. Like. That's mm -hmm. a different conversation. Like you just said, look, it's ombre effect, which is just an observation, but yet people got fucking pissy about it. And I think that's something about our community and actually neurodivergence in general, not even just the tisms, but like neurodivergent people in general, we say some shit that's just observation because it falls the fuck out of our mouth, right? It's mm -hmm. that it's that brain to mouth lack of filter, right? Yeah. It, see, you both recognize me saying that. Like, I've always described myself that way because we've all felt that, right? It's, it's to me, yeah. it's one of the unifying factors of everybody who's like hashtag fucking no filter is we go brain to mouth, nothing in between, right? But we all know that thought process because literally it's. But we always say observations, and people get pissy about it. Well, in Nick's case, it's fuck? not because he's autistic. It's just that he's very smooth brained. That is a true it's statement. Right. The entire right <laughs> side is just completely just flat. <laughs> There's no, just, no wrinkles. Mm, none no, no ridges. No ridges, nope. no wrinkles. Mm -mm. You know? no. Just iron that shit out. That's yeah. exactly His right. His brain don't fold. It it irons. Yep, that's right. I was that's trying right. to make a joke like that. Mm. My money don't jiggle jiggle or don't fold or whatever the fuck that what? ass song is everyone always says. Mm -hmm. You ever heard? You did it the other day, Amanda. What is it? How does it go? My money don't money jiggle doesn't... jiggle. It folds. Yeah, it folds. Yeah, it folds. So, yeah his wiggle. brain don't it fold, fold. It. Yeah, there you go. His brain don't mm -hmm. fold, fold. It's just smooth. But I can't make. I was trying to make it work in the song, and it didn't work. Oh, Cut it out. Damn it, it, Amanda! Fix stop! It up. Stop drinking on the job, Amanda. Come <laughs> on. Oh. <laughs> this is actually vodka. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? If it's Same. not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. <laughs> Well, Nick, it actually Sorry, his brain smooths out once he split the hair down the middle. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it just smooth, smooth itself out after that. That's okay, nope, that uh, I'd that like to it. I'd like to fucking mention that he has not gone a single fucking episode without making a fucking middle part joke. Sorry for tapping your mic there. Um, he like not a single fucking episode, and he always does the. Part your hair down the middle. Yeah. Oh, you, you really? can't tell? Can't really tell. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Not, not on the camera. Gen, the Gen Z oh. loves you. Gen Z loves you right Parted now. Parted down the middle. I, I no. always part in the middle. I always have. Ever since I was that's like 12. That's like so controversial. Like, that's so controversial because, like, it was like a whole thing. Because I'm in, like, the hair world, right? They're trying okay. to take our, our side parts away from us. Why? Okay. And I'm like, you us fucking millennials. Mm -hmm. leave my skinny jeans alone and leave my side part alone. Leave me the fuck alone. They're trying to say that like flare is the only way to go, which fuck you. Cause we had that mm -hmm. in like the two thousands, you what, stupid little brats. What, what is, and then middle what? parts are no longer a thing or, or side parts are no longer a thing. It's back to the middle part. And I'm oh. like, fuck you. I'm happy with the way my face looks this way. I'm uh -huh. happy with my skinny jeans. Leave me the fuck alone. Sorry. Okay, one, you're a grown ass woman. Over. Stop wearing fucking skinny jeans. Were you like into um, emo? Is that, where you, is that your thing? No, no. No, it, it's straight up like I've never understood the skinny jeans things. And if y'all dig them and they comfy fucking do what you got to do. But I've never understood the entire concept of skinny jeans like jeans fucking fit. Why do in the fuck do we need to like make them fit more like tighter? Because they're more stretchy. Like they make them at this point, like the skinny jeans are uh -huh. not like jean material like y'all wear like they're jeggings. like stretchy well, yeah, no, they're no, like no, leggings I, but jeans yeah so like, like even the men's skinny jeans are, are similar to that too like the men's slim fits generally are a, a little yeah. more stretchy material too yeah i don't like, own them the you do from top to bottom so it just fits better and i like how they look on me because i'm short too oh. so like 
having that skinny jeans just, yeah, yeah. and then a lot of times they make them in crops and then and they fit me right because i'm all of five foot three on a good day i'm sorry so, you just said crops what cropped length oh so like oh, they're, oh cropped they're shorter yeah. Sorry, can all we I bring heard back, was crop, and bring, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Can we bring back, like, cutoffs? Like, I'm going to make some jorts. Just cut them <laughs> off really short. Sweet jorts. <laughs> right up to, like, my inner thigh. You know, the Lieutenant Dangle from Reno 911. Yeah. Can I just do that? Oh, my God, that's funny. <laughs> some hot pants. I miss that show. We're way off topic. Okay. No, Speaking of no. offensive, though, Reno 911 was very offensive. Like, you could be real offended watching that show. Yes, you, really you could. could. You could, you but it, it was also at a time in Comedy Central's history where that's what they were doing. Mm-hmm was right. shit that was Park. edgy like and yeah. and i actually appreciate all of that and then all of a sudden let's not do any of that at all instead let's find a group that we're going to call the the target and we're just going to insult the shit out of that well, it seems like a lot of the stuff now is like anti-humor uh, yeah I mean, it's like anti-joke like the stuff yeah. is yeah um more Can, let me, abstract abstract and kind of fucking, just weird fucking Bo Burnham. Uh, I was just talking to my buddy last night about Bo Burnham. Now I've got no problem with the creativity, the level of talent and skill this gentleman has. I saw his first special and went, fuck this dude's funny. I like this guy's approach to some shit. He does some fucking musical songs. It all sounds really, you know, weird and awkward and, and cool. And then the second special comes out and I go, it's the same fucking thing. I'm pretty sure that's the same rhythm for the songs. I don't know music well enough, so I have no idea if it actually was. And then he did the whole like uh, pen, pandemic one, right? But even that one, same fucking jokes, same fucking style, same fucking rhythms, same fucking like and that's what it seems like. That's what he seems like to me is he's like basically doing like the anti stand up kind of thing. And like, no, you want a stand-up person to have confidence, to have charisma, to seem like he knows what the fuck he's talking about, even when he's saying some super ignorant shit. You still want to yeah. feel like he got an opinion, right? I know what you said. Watch he... it, I go, hmm. oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Male or female, step up there as if you feel as if you know everything in the fucking world. Don't step up there and just right. be like, oh, mm, I'm a kid. Like, what the fuck? Nobody wants to stand up like that. Fuck. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. My stand up uh, heroes, l- like I said before, Dennis Leary, George Carlin, Listen, Richard Pryor. I was huge. Nikki and Amanda, of- welcome to the part of the episode called Old Man Yells at Carl. <laughs> <laughs> it's where Nick goes on his old man rants. Listen, back yeah, in my day, comedy that. was funny. <laughs> back in my day, they told jokes. They didn't play queer music. <laughs> Back in my day, men were men. Men were men. Yep. Uh, men wear jorts and hot pants, and we dance to the sounds <laughs> of Queen. Mm-hmm. You, you know what's? You know what's? Hey, speaking of which, uh, I got all the pieces for my costume. Um, so uh, the, you're, the you're missing the, one piece, one crucial piece. What? <laughs> what? Nothing. A virus. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm missing oh. a little bit of the HIV on that one. All right. Oh all right. my god. All right. You know. You know what's crazy when when. When me and Natalie actually came up with the idea for me to be Freddie Mercury for the uh, comedy show tonight. Um, So we started looking through pictures and I scrolled up, right? She didn't know, by the way, and I don't know how the fuck she didn't know this, but she didn't know that before he had died, he really like got super skinny and got very sickly looking, right? So I scroll up a picture and she goes, oh, who the fuck is that guy? And I went, it's Freddie Mercury before he died. And she was like, Oh, he died? Like she knew, but didn't know that he was like that drastically sick, right? Oh, no. Like if you ever see the pictures, like he had to put on makeup to to yeah. get an even skin tone, but it was very pale, very white. Yeah. And like, he did not look like Freddie Mercury, right? He definitely did not right. look like that sexy fucking charismatic guy that was strutting around in a fucking unitard, right? Not that guy right. at all. He looked like the kind of guy where you go, oh, not long now. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but then I also made the joke that I should dress like that. Um, I probably would. So are, are you going to be him for Halloween? I am. I am. So uh, I am You're dressing like Freddie enough. Mercury, but I'm not doing the sickly about to die version. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, the one who's saying like who wants to live mustache? forever, like months before he mm-hmm. died. Um, yeah. No, I'm doing the the yellow coat from uh, uh, mm-hmm. the Wimbledon show he did. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm doing that one. Uh, yellow coat, white pants, red stripe on the side. Um, so glad you're okay. on topic today. 
You know, you brought up Freddie Mercury, motherfucker. No, I didn't. You, you said didn't. Queen. Okay, I said Queen. I didn't say Freddie Mercury. Yeah. So anyway, I was going to say, like, he always this makes these old man jokes about me and shit. But, like, if I was that much of an old man, I wouldn't even like myself. Like, fuck. <gasps> you kids true. with your skinny jeans. It's true. It's true. I, and your bow Burnhams. Well... My, again, he's a super talented fucking dude. It's just, what the fuck, man? Make a fucking real goddamn joke. His shit's kind of funny, okay. but funny in that awkward, I relate fucking way. Not the like, ha ha, look, I thought that way too, because I'm dumb. I like all the like smartsy fucking reflection comics. Leave me alone. Anyway, so Nikki, what's your opinion about the, the offensive shit? God, I went way off topic. Well, <laughs> it's okay. This is just, I, I told her before we started, like, yep. this is going to be rabbit holy AF and uh -huh. squirrel moments. This is just what we do. Yeah. Um, it's what we do anyway. And then you put four of us together and it's for sure going to happen. Yeah. But anyway, my thoughts on this is, hey, look, I feel we have like, a, sorry, I was going to make a joke. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead, Nikki. Go ahead. I was going to make Go an ahead. ombre joke, but about us all being white. Like that. No. Okay. It's just shades of cream. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, we're shades of so mayonnaise. We're, Let's we're, be the honest. we're the beige people, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're the beige. It's terrible. Anyway, I feel like, I don't know, I was raised in the, you know, 90s, 2000s, where like things like saying you're retarded was just what you said. Like it was before whoa, that whoa, got, whoa. yeah, I know, whoa, canceled already. But like, when you just say that's retarded, you know, and like stuff like mm -hmm. this is part of the yeah. vernacular Listen, of the day. Or I grew up in Massachusetts. Everybody said that. Yeah, retarded. that's so yeah, gay. But it was retarded. like a lot of people retarded. said retarded. that's so retarded. gay and yeah. shit. Without yeah. the R. Yeah, and that's, that's so gay. Retarded. Yeah, they would say it all the time. That's retarded. Yeah. yeah. So like, I get it. But like, I, and we were raised on like South Park and, mm -hmm. and just the ignorant comedy tv shows like right. that like i you weren't supposed to i wasn't supposed to watch it but i was up late at night watching adult swim when i shouldn't have been Eating you know and poops. like we were raised on that inappropriate humor <laughs> and so like i just it just was part of my right vocabulary growing up right so it was something that i had to kind of unlearn as the years went on that like maybe that's not the most sensitive thing to fucking say but I wasn't saying it to be rude. We were just saying it because it's just what you said. Right. It was part of right? the vernacular like, for you of that age. Same thing. Like, right. Most, right. most like, of the oh, time when people said us. that's gay, yeah. they weren't trying to insult gay people. Well, hold on. Hold right. on. Are you making fun of the short bus? Wow, yeah, Amanda. Yeah, yeah. I would not expect mm -hmm. it out of somebody who looks like you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was the driver of the short bus. Thank you very yes. much. Excellent. So you weren't quite retarded enough to sit in the back. Got it. So when Nick. Right, when right, right. When Nick was in school, yeah. uh, he was a big fan of the Magic School Bus. So that's how they got him on the short bus. They just told him it was right, the Magic right. School Bus. Oh, they just said I a, was a, a I was Miss Frizzle for Halloween one year. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah, were Miss Frizzle? Miss Frizzle one year, and it was dead yeah. fucking on. It was dead on. She looked so perfect as Miss Frizzle. It was it was amazing. Remember that episode nice. where they but went like, inside that kid's body? That was weird. Yep. That was weird. And, so mm -hmm. you're saying at some point on that show, the teacher went into a student's body? They shrunk yep. the bus into microscopic size and went through someone's yeah, body. Like Yo, I could have said, I could have sworn I just set you up like perfect pitch fucking lob for you to I don't knock make a homer those, on that one. I don't make those like pedophilic jokes, Nick. Okay. Right now you don't. Yeah, no. He doesn't write this second, apparently. Right, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> the but fuck? anyway, avoiding avoiding the, the whole pedo thing. We're about well, to go so down. I, um, I actually think it kind of goes to the topic, even though I, I know full well none of us agree with fucking pedophilia no. in any way, short, uh, shape, not. or form. But it does, that joke does still go into the direction of what we're talking about, For though, sure. because it's people still get super sensitive when they hear jokes about that because, like, oh, oh my God, you're making jokes South, about kids being victimized. South Park. No, actually, we weren't. South Park, uh, the video game, yeah. the, the fractured butthole. Oh, which yeah. Is yeah. RPG. Yeah. And then the second one, they, I can't remember the second one. They had uh, Jared Fogel was a boss in that game. And <laughs> sorry, it was hilarious. <laughs> so. The police, the police are trying to, the police are actually trying to capture the kids. They're trying to stop them from doing something. And they lock them in a room with Jared Fogle. And Jared Fogle is a boss you have to fight in the game. And he attacks them with a foot long sub. And when he attacks them, he like, he holds the Subway sandwich near his crotch. And he like thrusts at them and it was like, Fucking oil oh, juices from the sandwich coming out. Oh. <laughs> so fucked up. 
It was, oh by the way, it was, God. it's hilarious no in the game, but it's fucked up. No one's yeah. from South Park. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. That, that whole, that whole game is fucked up. Like, Nick, don't you need to play that game sometimes. Don't they come gay guys' ass in that one? They, yeah. they also have not, Nazi, ab- Nazi abortions. What? There's there's aborted babies, aborted fetuses that are Nazis. <laughs> what? Oh my they god! They have Nazi yeah. aborted fetuses in the game. You have to fight. Okay. I'd, I'd just like to mention. I'd like to mention that if if we were talking about this 24 years ago, we would not all be going, "Oh my god!" To all of this, we'd be like, "Ah, that's fucking we'd hilarious." But yeah, South, yeah, South Park gets sure. away right? with all kinds of crazy 23 shit. 23 years fucking later, and we're all like, oh my god, Jared Fogel with a Subway there's, sandwich. Well, there's this bad guy who's turning the aborted fetuses into, like, little zombies, but they're, like, <coughs> Nazi <coughs> fetuses crawling around oh, trying to kill no. you. It's so stupid. Oh my god. Yeah. And then yeah, there, there was one dumb. one level where you go up to, I think you go up the, I, I didn't watch South Park. Is it, like, up, up names, Mr. Slave's like butt or ass. something? Yeah, like, yeah, and then you just yeah. find all this stuff Mr. that he shoved up there. That's mm-hmm. all the things up his butt. Yeah, it's like all these mm-hmm. abandoned things that are shoved up his butt. <laughs> well, they did a whole episode. Like, that was a whole episode where he got the gerbil stuck in Let his Let me ass. winks. Like, that oh, my God. Episode. Oh, well, yeah. were they making fun of the whole Richard Gere fucking suspected yeah. fucking yeah, thing? Got, he, yeah, Mr. Mackey got a gerbil stuck in his ass, and they had okay. to, like, yeah, it was a whole, it was a whole episode. Okay. Gerbil's a bad Yeah, gerbil's mm-hmm. a bad Yeah, uh-huh, don't, don't do that. But anyway, so, like, so this good. kind of stuff is what I grew up on, right? Uh-huh. So, like, we grew up watching this shit. We grew up, like, saying these things. And the intent behind it is what's missed most of the time, right. especially now, just to kind of, like, bring it back. Right, where it's, the actual I feel joke like, of it is. Correct, correct. Yeah. It's like, it, do I really believe this bullshit that I'm saying? No, right. it's meant to be in jest and in humor. And right. I mentioned this before, but, like, I feel like the world is so fucked in general anymore and especially then it's, it's always been some crazy shit happening in the world right mm. and if you can't find humor in something even when it might be slightly inappropriate i feel like what's the fucking point of being on this planet like what is the fucking point of being here if you can't laugh sometimes if you don't find humor in shit you're just i feel like you just fall into fucking depression it's like, like what my, the fuck are you here for? my hamas joke okay? yes yes there was nothing yeah. i said right. There was one way or the other. I didn't say like I support one side or the other. All right. I did was make a joke right. about the name Hamas. Just admit that you right. support Hamas. Just support, yeah. Just so that you support Hamas. And that's okay. it. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, and and I will actually say I, so. I don't um, support Palestine. I support Hamas specifically mm-hmm. because I believe just in the targeted separate. destruction of Israel. Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody's gonna clip that the fuck out of there. Yeah, Somebody's gonna clip that shit out. Like, that's gonna he's be great. Semitic now. Uh, um, You're gonna okay, be on Fox so, News so, next. Just watch. Yeah. Right. Uh, watch list, watch list. I, I swear to God, mm-hmm. some fucking anchor person on, on fucking Fox News is going to sh- pop up your fucking face with Hulk Hogan on the front of you and just like, this gentleman now supports Samas. He's Stay now on. an American terrorist. Here's part of the problem is, and I'm only going to say this real quick. Okay. A lot of people conflate Hamas and the Palestinian people because Hamas is the yes. regime that's in charge. Just like people used to right. think that all Germans were Nazis and no, they weren't. Right. Nazi was a group of people. There were German citizens that didn't agree at all. So that's why I was making right. the joke that yeah. like, I support yeah. Hamas specifically, not the Palestinians, not the people, just the regime yeah. that's J- just the violent the fuckers. It's not the same thing. Yeah. 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 Calling out the fact that it's not the same thing. Right. So okay. going back to that oh. though, like how, do you feel like bring the tism back in for a second? Yeah. Yeah. So I there's this thing, right? Where we don't get, we don't get sarcasm or we don't understand humor. It's like the, the general thing is like, Oh, well, if you're not, if you don't understand sarcasm, then you can't have the tism or whatever. Right. It's yeah. The stereotype. So of that, yeah. not true. I, I mean, I like, did have a hard time understanding sarcasm worst. for a long time. But. You did. You did. And then you watched yeah. enough comedy and learned for yourself what the fuck it was. You know, I want right. to Total side note, but also along the same lines here, is every time I read, uh, um, actually quite often when I'm reading or watching some some TikToks or reels or whatever, one of them social media fucking things. Yeah, another another old man moment for you, Steve. Um, anytime I'm reading those and somebody talks reading about the, like, the New York um, Times. you know, how come the rest of the world doesn't change for us and shit? You know, they didn't teach us the rules and shit. Yeah, but what are you doing yeah. to try to learn it? Like, I know full well when I didn't understand some shit socially, my ass watched way more fucking movies, way more TV shows. I asked more fucking questions to my friends who clearly didn't have the fucking problem that I was having. 
Like, right. and I'm not saying I'm better or worse than anybody else on the fucking planet. No fucking human right. being at all. I'm just saying that like in a given moment and, and kind of what, what we're talking about with being offensive and like getting back to like the, the traits for autism that kind of cause social issues for us. I ser- searched out what, normal is like what happens most often what is what is the regular social interaction for it i i look you're being very that. ableist right now no i'm <laughs> just telling you my experience i'm real. not saying like, everybody need to do this shit and i'm not saying everybody needs to step up like i did i'm just saying this is what i did to seek out an answer what for you what? Right. what what'd you say so this is what i said this is what worked out for you yeah i'm just saying for me i'm not even saying everybody has the fucking ability to fucking read what i read and translate it the same way i did i'm not saying that and either what i'm and saying that's part though, of the problem what sorry no 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 go. i was like and that's that's part of the problem it's like if you try to say something from your own personal perspective you're like well and then p- other people get offended and they're oh, yeah. like well that won't work for me it's like i didn't say it would i'm just saying it right for me Yo, oh, i'm yeah. talking about you like, I'm not talking about you, you narcissist. Calm yeah, down. yeah. Uh, no, I'm totally <laughs> with you because there's a there's a certain lady that I decided to un, uh, uh, follow uh, with our, our page account who's on TikTok because she kept doing a bunch of fucking videos saying this is what autism is. This is what autism isn't. This is how you can help yourself on autism. This is how you can't. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, hey, you ain't got a degree in shit. Like, you don't right. have fuck nothing of a reason to be able to fucking say one thing or another. You have some opinions and I'm glad you have them. Please share them, but don't fucking say it as if you're, you fucking know best because none of us truly fucking know best. And like I work in an industry where we say the patient knows best. I'll tell you right now, none of us fucking know best, right? We're all just fucking crap shooting every goddamn decision we make. Oh, wow. I soapboxed the shit out of that moment. Didn't I? All right, let me back the fuck down now. But like, but I still do it to this day. Like when, when Steve points out, uh, am I monopolizing shit against Steve? What? So Nikki, what's your opinion? <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I had I an RSD like, moment right there. <laughs> you're okay. I feel like it's, I don't know. My brain just shout out. Steve, say something. Hi. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, uh, so this is something that happened to me recently. So I, I occasionally go on Reddit. I was on Reddit. And occasionally I noticed that like a lot of subreddits are very toxic and have kind of a hive mm-hmm. mind. So I was on this subreddit page and I, all I did was offer to share my opinion. I didn't actually share it. And apparently that was triggering enough that how somebody dare how dare you share your opinion <laughs> attacked me. They made fun of me for being autistic. And then when I reported the person who was making fun of me for being autistic, I got banned. From that subreddit. <laughs> oh, I mean that tracks. By that the way, tracks. this is a very popular like. Um, I don't know how to say this in a polite way. So like, don't say it in a polite way. We're among a, yeah, friends of the tism. We're not it's, apologizing today. It's yeah. a controversial but also popular subreddit that focuses mainly on like women's issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I guess they just didn't like the fact that I was a guy. Right. So they're being sexist against you. They held the power in the room and said, fuck you. You're so a guy. Get out. Here's the p- a thing that I have a problem with that I have to no remind dicks myself. allowed. <clears throat> That's the sign on the front of their bar. Well, I have to remind myself is if I'm in a if I'm in a space, let's say this is this is a subreddit that is focused on women's issues. However, it's also a subreddit that is um, I don't want to say forced on everybody, but it's like one of the default subreddits. So it pops up for everybody. Uh, OK. okay. And like the, like the home page. And people will yeah. ask rhetorical questions in those subreddits they don't actually want answers to. And that's the problem is I have to remind myself, <clears throat> like, okay, this is a women's space. Women want to just complain or vent or ex- express frustration. Or maybe talk to other women who right, might but, have similar experiences. Right. What the fuck? What it's always about say. complaining. What but what I'm no, saying no, is no, no, usually they say yeah. things they don't actually want. It's kind of like that guy thing where women complain that guys want to solve the problems. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of like that. They're like. It's an echo chamber. If I just say like, hey, yeah. yes, like what I said was, hey, I don't know, like if you actually want to understand why a guy might do that or if you just want to vent about it. Mm. But I said, if you actually want to, like I'm I'm asking because I didn't want to share the you tried opinion. To mansplain, didn't you? I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't want to share the opinion <laughs> unsolicited. So that's why I asked if you want right. me to share yeah, the opinion. Hold on. I, that was, that I, ap- apparently was offensive in itself. And in fact, I, I talked to one of the mods about it and they said, well, um, your comment wasn't relevant to the post. That's why we banned you. And 
uh, you were being rude or something. And I'm like, how was I being rude? But, so okay. well, I actually you were offering something before yeah. you went ahead and got accused right. of mansplaining. He, he, you anti mansplaining. Hey, like, you really want to understand this? I have, I will absolutely. I wanted well, to try to explain to from like the male perspective because this woman right, was complaining right. about but something a guy did. Shove it down, you know, shove it down their throat. So and I wasn't. Been, I like, wasn't trying. Hear my opinion. I wasn't trying to um, like make excuses for the guy's behavior, but I wanted to try to. Yeah. Like, offer maybe why a guy might do something like that yeah no that and that wasn't what she was there for she no, was there right. for to say so that i need to remind myself yeah, she was there to bitch i need to remind myself yeah. that when you're in those kind of spaces sometimes people just want to well, want yeah. complain or want a bitch and they don't want yeah. but that's also why well, i, I ask hey do you want me to right. explain well, well i think that's the difference between mansplaining and giving an explanation or giving knowledge to somebody is if you start off with, well, let me help you with that. That's well, actually, fucking mansplaining. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, actually, actually, except for, let me point something out with that statement though. Those of us who are tisms, we have tendency to say some shit like that. When I, when we feel like the person doesn't have all the information we feel they need for something like there right. are times where, I am clearly not saying somebody is dumber than me. I just have extra information. I'm like, actually, so, and I just start going into it and it's not even Next a thought in my moment. head of who I'm saying it to. It's straight up yeah. just, well, I got info. They, Let me call say that, it. they call that being a neck beard online. A what? <laughs> really? A neck beard. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why is, what? A, a neck beard, a fedora, you know? It's like, what? well, actually, well, actually. Which is like every autistic oh, male I've ever met fucking says that phrase. Actually, no, every so D and D magic well, player I've ever met says that fucking. The stereotype phrase. of a neckbeard is like kind of like an overweight guy with like oh. hair growing out of his neck, like pimples. Maybe wears a fedora, like D and D nerd. Like that's the stereotype. Oh, like so a, as he, I just said, I'm, I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna be playing D and D later today. So um, you are. Yep, there, there yep, oh, mm -hmm. bravo, bravo! Like, so I'm say saying hi this, to your neckbeard guy. She, she knows what a neckbeard is. I will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. actually, sure. he the the problem yeah, yeah. is. But, but like, let me ask you a question a minute, because you're playing with a bunch of people who probably say that fucking phrase often. Do you feel that they only really say it to women to mansplain, or is that just part of their vernacular? Uh, it depends. Like, yeah, it just depends because they. <laughs> I will say that the one that's leading it is my coworker, and uh -huh. he has he he uh, has the same brand of like um. I, I kind of joked to him. I'm like, are you sure you're not autistic? And he just, he's like, no, not, no. I'm like, are you sure your wife's ADHD? You make a perfect pair. Yep. Um, but everyone's a little, but yeah, autistic. They, <laughs> yeah, everyone's a little autistic guys. Yeah, a little everyone's bit. Everyone's a little bit racist. I have an yeah. Um, but <laughs> so yeah, so the, uh, the whole, well, actually thing, it just, it just depends on like what the, not the tone, but like what the intent is. Cause like, okay, if you're giving me information that you genuinely believe I don't have, mm -hmm. then fine. But if like, say say like a woman who is a physicist is explaining something and then like a guy who works at mcdonald's just goes well actually she's like just shut the fuck up well just hold on hold on let me and i'm not you're you're right in well, that actually, situation you're, completely you're about to, well actually me. well no 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 what i was gonna say <laughs> no no I, I i i was gonna talk with you about a fucking subject mm -hmm. um because he's trying like, to mansplain you right now. No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. What I was going to point out is like, well, you're correct. Like 90% of the fucking time, you're right. The, the person who's got a fucking degree in physics, male or female, is going to know way more about fucking physics than that dude who works at McDonald's. There are going to be some situations where that person who works at Mickey D's might have just happened to recently read an article about some shit that person doesn't know about and brings it up. There is a possibility yeah. to that. And the reason why I point that out is because I only have a bachelor's degree in psychology, but I read a fuck ton about psychology. I read a fuck ton of research papers. I read a fuck ton about different uh, therapeutic processes, different things people are figuring out about the brain. And so like there is some shit that the people who have a higher degree set than me might not know and might not have read because a psychology is a ginormous. Oh, I mean, physics is a big field too, but psychology is a big fucking field. I mean, there's a whole lot of subsets to it, right? Well, and, actually and, and it's by pretty no means, simple. And by no means am I mansplaining it. to you at all in that. Cause a, I, I stopped using, well, actually a long time ago when somebody did it to me and I went, shut the fuck up. I know that already. Oh yeah. I mm -hmm. got to stop saying that. Yeah, I, he, I think he's not trying to mansplain like, you. He just doesn't dude, respect stop women. talking over a woman. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the difference is, is like, if, say you read an article, say there's like a world renowned psychologist. Yeah. You read an article instead of saying like, well, actually, it's they like three since I said this. It's like the difference is saying, 
well, have you heard about this sort of thing? Yes, agreed, as I was about to spill my coffee. It's a way bigger mm -hmm. cup than I'm used to, man. Okay, I keep hitting the fucking thing. No, Are I agree with you. Small? Yes, it is. Oh, they're about the size of Trump's. Um, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with you, Amanda. It is about the approach in which you take. Because if you say, well, actually, you're coming from a position of authority or expertise, or at least assumed expertise. Or like condensation. Yes, condensation. yes. Right. Exactly. They're compensating for whatever insecurity in the back of their head. So like, oh, I know some shit so It now. sounds a little condescending. Yes. Um, yes. And I and I agree with that, but there like are also a, like times. Like a convict going downstairs. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this directly. There are times where women have accused me of mansplaining, but I know my intent was none of that. I know my intent right. was that, but because I happen to look fucking male, because not that anybody fucking checked with me on that motherfucker. But because I look like somebody who acts, or because I look like the stereotype of the person who has oppressed everybody they automatically assume that's what the fuck I was doing. Even though I didn't even right. start with, well, actually what I said was, well, I read this paper the other day that talked about this direction. What do you think? And then they were like, don't, you don't need to mansplain. I have a master's degree. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck. Right. You've got a master's de fucking degree in social work for Christ's sake. I'm talking about fucking human behavior over here. Shut the fuck up. So I got a little right. indignant after that because all I was trying to do was contribute to the conversation, not trying to, one up her and but i've had that and several times in my life what but that's how it's seen and like that was my point it, with this yes, too. Is like the I, offense thing i feel like yeah. when we're giving the tism in us yeah it, especially if it's a yeah. special interest topic right we want to say hey i have something to contribute here that i think is important that might help you right broaden your knowledge set on this said topic correct agreed but when we interject in that way of well actually yeah. when we're just excited to give more information we right. are we are uh stereotyped as being rude or it's yes. assumed that we're trying to one up the conversation yeah. or we're so we're someone's thunder rude in that moment or yeah or whatever yeah. right so like it's it's seen as rude intrusive uh one upping it, or controlling the conversation or not allowing someone else to have their own viewpoint or vantage point or opinion because it seems like we're constantly trying to you know interject or one up mm -hmm. the conversation or or seem smarter than we are or whatever attribute it to whatever you want but you could put that across the entire gambit of everything from making funny jokes to trying to contribute to an intellectual conversation to trying to contribute some weird fact about something that your brain was triggered by by the mm -hmm. conversation we just want to be included and we're trying to be included in the the topic and it's seen as rude when we're just trying to offer our information and be a part of the conversation right. in the best way we know how, which is, Oh, I have information right. about this topic. Therefore I can be included here. Let me jump in. And then we're like taken aback when they're like, fuck you. What the hell? I didn't ask you for your mm -hmm. opinion. It's like, no, no, that's not what I was trying to do. But then you can't explain that very right. well either. Cause they're already pissed that you've interjected. So it's, that, that was my topic on that. It all, that it all boils part. down to perspective, perception of it, right? right. If you right. automatically assume the intent of another human being with nothing more than just your observation or your already preconceived notion, then you're already like not listening to them to begin with, right? But obviously right. we can't know somebody's intent unless we ask them, but I think that's what has changed. And maybe it's only changed because I'm now getting to an age where like I'm seeing certain things differently, but I'm pretty sure in the early 2000s, in the 90s, people fucking asked more questions like, what the fuck you mean? Right? Like, mm -hmm. where are you coming from on that perspective? Like we it asked sure more of way. it. What's up? I said it feels that way. It feels right? like the... The perception of intent is implied now, depending on your personal viewpoint. So your personal viewpoint in in the context is the only thing, meaning you, meaning the person making the assumption about what yes. just happened to yes. the situation. Your personal viewpoint is affecting everything all the time, right? All the time. But especially the nowadays, time. I feel like everyone assumes before they try to understand where the other person is coming from. Mm -hmm. You hear a statement made and there's an assumption about that person immediately based on what came out of their mouth. There's no questioning. There's no help me understand what you meant by that. Yes. There's no 
Well, let's yes. have a conversation about it. It's you've immediately said something. I've immediately passed a judgment on what you said based off my own personal perception of the words that came out of your mouth. Right. And I have not bothered to follow up on what did you mean by that? How can we have a greater discussion? Maybe right. there's something for me to learn here. It's just immediately you are passed judgment upon. I could have taken that joke you made earlier, Steve, about the main thing or the Holocaust or what the mm -hmm. million jokes. Hey, you I have didn't said make any Holocaust podcast. jokes today. No, you know, no, just, I she's mean, bringing in general, up topics. Over all the episodes, yeah, oh, over all the episodes I have listened topics. to, the a million yeah. jokes that you have made, I could have passed judgment upon yep. you as a person who is racist, mm -hmm. um, you mean like, like Amanda bigoted, did? Yeah, like Amanda did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yep. Could, I, could hey, I can see the so look on your face or you. lack of expression. I get it. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no. okay, that's another thing. She just sure. is express that's just is her. Yeah, that's, her so but that's that's my that's my autism, okay? Sorry, yeah, well, I, I was I was actually I was actually bringing it up because as I keep <laughs> doing this to my mouth, right? While while somebody else is talking, because I that's how I had to teach myself how to fucking let people fucking talk. Uh yeah. because I have that face hurts <sighs> when I talk to people because I force a smile. Like I have to force a smile, otherwise please, I look like please. I have RBF too. It's no, like no, no, that's thing. okay. You yeah. can have that. It's just the lack of expression. I'm not sure if she's still no. alive. I can't see if she's breathing. We're just going to call her Daria. No, no, no. And, and I apologize. I hope that's Daria. Offended. Yeah, what? I'm being Daria for Halloween. So that's hilarious. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. Um, he called it. So he is like, Daria in real and, life. I, and I'm actually partially bringing that up because of what you're talking about, Nikki, because people could yeah. see Amanda right now on the podcast and just think she's bored or, or she doesn't yeah. agree or she's pissy or whatever. And none right. of that is true. It's their perception of the characteristics of her face, Correct. not the reality of what's in her head. Far too many people think they're fucking psychic. And I don't mean that mm -hmm. because there are actually people who believe they're psychic and I'm not making fun of them at all. I have no idea if that's a real thing or fucking not. And I don't care if it's a real thing or not, but far too many fucking people believe they are smart enough and skilled enough to know what another human being is thinking. Yeah. And I'm going to, isn't that a lot of that like evolutionary because uh, like even babies, being psychic. Hold on. Oh, Will okay. you shut your mouth for a second? Sorry. Even babies react and respond to people's faces. And like most a lot of our communications as human beings is, is nonverbal. It's body yes. language, facial expressions. So like, yes, uh, as a lot of people who are, are uh, on the spectrum don't necessarily make a lot of facial expressions or not very expressive all the time. And we're however, not good at reading it either. Yeah. However. It is somewhat normal for neurotypical people to read the face, the body language and the uh, the the what people's faces are telling them. It doesn't mean that they should maybe make extra leaps and make assumptions, but it's too. normal for people to read other people's faces as you're, human beings. You're, you're right. It's just can we've I pause gotten us to for two seconds. I'm sorry. Can I can I pause us for just a second? The coffee has hit me. I really need to take a bathroom break. So I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll come right back. But I'm not going to cut this out. I'm just going to leave it in. Yeah, we're going to leave this part We're, we're not going to talk either. We're just going to like awkward silence it's, while you just go awkwardly bathroom. wait for me to come back from the bathroom. I don't care. But like I'm about to pee my pants. So I really have to go to the bathroom. And then I want to hear Amanda's story because this has been her entire life. Like she has been so judged by the fact that she is just kind of flatly. Really? I, so, all of us. Yes, all of us really have like in one way or that. the other. You've got fucking resting right. bitch face. Nick looks like a man who would touch right. children and steve is steve <laughs> people think i have no feelings at all so yeah they, they think yeah, he's fucking exactly. emotionless anyway go pee so, don't get yeah, a urinary tract infection go okay I, I gotta go bye <laughs> i'm gonna go too since she's gone yeah you should go too you should leave me and amanda alone together so she can stare yeah. at me awkwardly can I and adult? i could say some really offensive shit I'm just like the whole me like staring off. It's like I'm trying to think of like, okay, I want to say this thing, but how do I phrase it in a way that doesn't right. make me sound stupid? Well, that's what so. happens with him too. Like I've been working with him for seven years now and only in the last mm -hmm. like nine months have me and him truly connected for the autistic selves we are. Prior to that, we had all these fucking issues because his ass is better writing things, like typing shit out in That's text me. message, and I'm better at talking. So communication mm -hmm. already is fucked for us, right? Because that's he's, me and Nikki for sure. Like I'm, you, I'm a better yeah. like writer. Like as long as you let me get my thoughts out, that's mm -hmm. why when she originally wanted to do this podcast, I'm like, but I'm not good at the talking thing. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not. I was like, I'm. I was like, I can write for you all day long, but I'm not yeah. good at the talking thing. So. so he, we had a couple of episodes um, right at the beginning where he was like, "Man, you just talked a lot. You didn't even let me talk, right?" And I was like, mm -hmm. "How long do you want me to fucking sit there and wait for you to fucking process?" Like, how long do you want me to do that for? Like, you're worried about having dead space on fucking air. Like, what do you want me to do? 
And, mm-hmm. and, but he said it enough times that I said, you know what, man, here's an idea. You love to write. That's your communication style. So why don't you do that? And he actually created a blog for on the spectrum. And that's where he gets to, you know, do his fucking thing. Right. And since mm-hmm. he's been doing that, he's been giving me extra space here verbally to be able to do my thing because honest to God, you and him could probably write a 10 fucking page explanation or opinion about fucking anything. I'll give you a paragraph because with that lots to of typos me, and yeah, we yeah, with tons of typos and no shit punctuation. I, I type the way I talk and somebody once told it's me, all put a caps a, lock. is it all in caps lock too? <laughs> tell him, <laughs> can you teach this man how to use a comma? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I had a professor Stop years ago. Stop putting apostrophes in plural words. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Stop putting apostrophes in plural words. <laughs> so I had, I, I said professor, which was wrong. I had a teacher many, many moons ago say, Every time you take a breath is where a period goes. Well, my ass can fucking talk for 30 seconds straight without fucking you're taking just one a breath. Run, run, you just one long yes. run on yes. Yes. Hi, my name got... is Nick, and I'm here to talk to you today about jelly beans. <laughs> jelly beans taste really good, and I really like exactly. jelly beans. Exactly. That's so how it reads I, on the paper. Yeah. So when I got to college and I was doing a, a shit ton of run on sentences, my professor was like, your paper's fucking wrong. Use a goddamn comma. And I was like, okay, where? Well, every time you breathe, I didn't. And she was like, okay, read it to me. And I just started going. And she was like, oh, you're not Yeah, kidding. but when you read my stuff, like, yeah, do you, does it make like sense you to you where I have commas things. and stuff? Well, no, How do you read still, the stuff that I read? Well, because it still makes sense to me because when I see a comma or a period on a page, I stop. Like literally I take mm-hmm. a, like in acting, they would say, take a beat. I take yeah. a beat like a and comma, then I fucking start again. Comma is like a short pause and a right. period is like. But that's just it though. If you want to do that in relation to like when I go to write, if if I do it based on when I breathe, right? I'm just. See, my my problem is I, I use way too many commas because I pause a lot when I talk because uh-huh. I try to get mm-hmm. the thought process out so when i type i'd use way too many commas i'm like that should just be a period that should just be you know just don't put a comma there just stop so my overcorrection of that was Wait, so i was so would... worried about how many periods i did that i eventually like my writing sounded the dog uh, uh the dog walked down the street the dog put its foot on the ground the dog you know what i mean like it wasn't so there was no flow. amanda when did you miss your first period oh god hi nikki welcome back <laughs> oh, no. Holy I, shit. I heard the whole conversation because I left my earbuds Holy in. Holy shit. So I was listening to this the whole time. When did really you funny. miss your first? What? Because she said she uses too many comments. I'm wondering when she missed the first period. <laughs> I was actually, was it was actually guy. 14 years old. The summer of when I was 14 years old. <laughs> Same. Mm-hmm. No, just kidding. That's, that's when you missed no, your we, first that's one. That's when we started yeah. our yes, first period. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's not. What I'm saying. She's that's never what missed you her first. Oh, well, you did have you, missed a period, and then did they come you, uh, up later, but not so, because you were pregnant. Was that offensive? I'm sorry. Oh my god. Hey, no. no, Nikki said we're not allowed to apologize. That was inappropriate. No to, apologies. Today. Inappropriate. Um, okay, okay, so where the fuck were we? And what were we talking? I know we're I had a point I was going to make. Yeah. Oh, I want to talk about the RBF thing. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. to talk about the RBF thing. And then I want to hear from Steve, too, because I feel like he said he's been called cold and emotionalist or whatever. So I want to hear from him. Yeah. And then I want to hear from you. you know, I've already talked about it, so I'm not going to say anything. I just want to hear. Before she yeah. fucking cut me off to go fucking the drain her table, fucking sir. bladder, the I was like. The table, okay? The fuck? Anyway, hi, Amanda. Go ahead. Nick doesn't take hi. bathroom breaks. We put a little cup under his chair. <laughs> yeah, cut a hole in the bottle. bottle. Yeah, he thinks mm-hmm. there's a cup. It's not. It's a hose that goes down to his downstairs neighbor. Uh, That's hilarious. Okay. RBF yeah. face. Go. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of the stories I have is I, when I first went to the movie theater, I had one of the coworkers. It was probably a few months after she started working there. We got to actually become really good friends. She goes, you know, when I first started, I thought you didn't like me. I go, why? She's like, well, you just never smiled at me. You just, I was like, I, that's just, that's just my face. I'm sorry. She's like, I just thought you hated me. I'm like, no, I really liked you. You were, I was like, you're competent. So I liked you. And then, um, and then my, every time I walked into work, when I worked at Barnes and Noble, I had a manager really neurotypical. She was like, are you okay? I go, yeah. Why? She's like, you look upset about something. Like, that's just my face. Sorry. That's just my face. And then the last one I had, the last one I remember is I was at work. I was at Barnes and Noble and I was off, off, um, off shift. And I was sitting at one of the cafe tables on my computer. Just, I was reading a story and I was listening to music and my coworker comes up to me. She goes, are you okay? I go, 
I take my earbud out. I go, yeah, why? She's like, you look like you're wanting to murder something. I go, well, something. No, I'm reading or... a good. I'm, I'm re- yeah, Not I'm someone. reading a good story. Yeah, just something. Just like something. I'm reading a good story, actually. She's like, oh, your face just looks like you want to murder someone. I'm like, <sighs> no, that's just my face. That's just my face all the time. I, I had a so, coworker. Um, she recently left, but I had a coworker who said, uh, "Did I do something wrong?" And I said, "No, why?" Well, I'm a supervisor at my job. Um, and, and I said, no, why? And she goes, you never say hi to me in the morning. And I said, I don't say hi to anybody. And she goes, well, why don't you say good morning to anyone? And I said, because I'm fucking doing my job. Like, and also it's the morning. Morning sucks. Like so, what the sorry. fuck? I'm, it's five 30 <laughs> in the fucking morning and I'm just getting here I'm not and a, shit. I'm like, not a monkey performing for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh. But that's what it seems like to me. Every fucking time somebody wants to do the, wants me or forces me to do the niceties. Right. And it's not that I'm a mean prick about it. It's just, if I ask you how your day is, I'm actually asking you, how is your day? How do you feel? Was it good? Was it bad? When I finally get to that. But if you want me to do it on fucking command, give me a fucking cookie first. Like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. I hope right. to God nobody sees me on the street and is like, here's a fucking cookie. I hope to God. Make that sure it's a biscotti happens. so it cracks his Now, teeth. let me tell you about or, my day. Yeah. Like, let me let me bring you to my van. With I also have more cookies in my in my windowless van. I am totally oh, following. I am totally van? following mm-hmm. because if somebody actually wants to sleep with me, I, whether they want to give it to me or not, I'm going to that van. I actually, uh, I wrote a joke about Nick in a, in a van for one of the roasts we did. Oh, that's true. Yes, he did. I said he's, yeah. he's a creep. And I said uh, he was the only kid who uh, used to go like willingly get into the van or something like that. That's fucking right. So he'd walk out 30 minutes later with a smile and a ring pop. Hell yeah. Oh, Give me that God. fucking lollipop, bitches. <laughs> Jesus so they just Christ. have to promise you a dog. Like, he went out looking for the windowless vans. Mm-hmm. He went out looking for mm-hmm. him. Hey, you oh know, when God. strange men tell me in the park that they lost their dog, I immediately try to help them. Yeah, immediately. Hey, you yeah, know what? Exactly like, right. Ted Bundy, me. Yeah. I bat for both some, some love yeah, is better right. than none at all. Right. Um, oh, no, you know what, Nikki? You're absolutely right. Whether it was a man or a woman, I'm fucking following. I'm I'm down for both yeah. fucking genders. So you know what? Somebody That's wants to flock. Said, let's go you, fuck. I bat for both. Sir, yep. there's 47 genders. Hey, Mister, there why is there a mattress genders. Oh, there's 47 band. genders. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm only down for oh, like 40. Seven of them can go fuck themselves. It's a, it's oh, a joke okay. online. Like, it's like, how dare you say that? That escalated quickly. Uh, guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed somebody got a fucking running tally of this shit. And like every other day, they're putting another fucking mark on that tally for how many genders there are. Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Let, why don't we, why don't we retrain ourselves as human beings to not give a fuck about the physical fucking biology of anywhere and just refer to each other as human. Ooh, mm-hmm. I got a better idea. Why don't we just refer to each other by the fucking name we have? Let's stop saying um, he, she, they, them, Z, Z, F, fucks. Fuck all that. Why don't we just say fucking Nikki, Amanda, Steve, Nick? Let's go. No, Nikki, you got to change your name. It's far too close to mine. And I was born first, sorry. so I win. So, Nick. Uh, you're like, you're like, fuck them call pronouns. me Nick. So. What? Amanda can attest to this. A lot of people actually call me Nick. I, and yeah. my whole family. Okay, does. sweet. You'll be Nick. Nick. I'll be Nikki for now on. Okay. In fact, okay. my brother's mm-hmm. been calling me Nikki since I was fucking three. So. Well, so. There you go. Yeah, when the movie Little Nicky came out, I thought my brother wrote it because he's been referring to me as Little Nicky since I was w- way before that fucking movie came out. And so I when it came movie. out, Don't I was get like, "Don't started on Adam Sandler. We'll be here for thirteen hours." Okay, yeah, he's my we're favorite. not we're not talking about awesome fucking comedians. So I've never been accused mm-hmm, of having favorite. having resting bitch face because you're okay. not because I'm not a man because I'm not a woman. But yeah, uh, he's not a man. <laughs> but my experience uh, was pretty similar to. Uh, Amanda's is pretty yeah. much every job I've had where people would be like, oh, uh, why are you, why don't, or people would say like, oh, uh, why, why are you, uh, like so angry or well, they would say, um, like actually I had a lady complain that I didn't say hi to her in the morning or I didn't introduce myself to her when I came in or I was like, yeah, cause I'm working or like, <laughs> uh, you know, same thing I- as with the, with the face they would say like, oh, how, how come you, uh. How come you, you know, the people would assume that I was uh, didn't like them or stuff like that. Or like, um, right. Whatever. T- tag me in. Tag me in. Tag me in. Tag me in. No, I'm not doing that. Let him finish his thought, poor okay. guy. So um, straight up, I got a story to actually support the shit out of what Steve just I was, said. I, I, well, I thought of one more story, too. When you Good. Say, so you, you um, first. Yeah, I'll be super quick. Probably not, but I, uh, I, I, I sure? will try. Are you sure? <laughs> no. 
about that. Uh, a lot so, of tech so when, that was when a we when we recruited somebody new for our comedy group, who I will not mention the name of because Steve still likes the person. I kind of do too. But when we recruited him, he he we used to hang out a lot with people and like go to casinos and fucking other shit together and all that. But one day the person stopped and said, dude, why is Steve always in a bad mood? And I said, he's not. He's actually doing a he's doing really good today. He's having having fun with us. Like they were like, how do you know? And I said, because you just made fun of you for the last hour and a half. And they were like, well, well, but he, but look at the way he looks. And I was like, he looks like fucking Steve. That's the way the guy looks. And the person was so like, well, I know when you're upset because you get angry and you get loud and you seem frustrated, but Steve just sits there and blankly stares at you. And I said, yeah, that's him being pissed with you. It's when he's talking, mm-hmm. you know, he's okay. And the person mm-hmm. was like, uh, that's weird. And I went, no, it's not. It's fucking Steve. Leave it alone. So Amanda, mm-hmm. you said uh, you had a story. Yeah, I actually, yeah. So I had actually uh, gotten fired after one day on a job. I had, um, I got laid off at one job. And so I went to one of those like hiring centers where mm. you take like tests and stuff. And then they place you somewhere like a staffing agency. That's what it's called. Um, so I actually had gotten hired at the staff agency because I did so well on the tests. And so it was like the first day in the job, this lady was showing me around, like, this is what you'd be doing, blah, blah. And then the next day she pulls me to her office. She's like, so you did really well on the test. You dressed professionally, all that. You seemed to understand what was going on, but I'm going to actually have to let you go. And I go, oh, why? She's like, you just don't, you just don't seem happy. I go, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, you, I, you didn't smile at all. I'm like, and I didn't say this, but I want to. I'm like, am I supposed to smile while filing paperwork and staring at a computer screen? Like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Like, that. Uh, am I just supposed to be smiling like an idiot mm. while sitting alone? It in reminds the me of uh, Office Space with mm-hmm. the with mm-hmm. Jennifer Aniston's character with the the the, yeah, the flare, the, the pieces of mm-hmm. flare. The yeah. flare. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How yep. much should I and have? So, well, as much as you want to have. But it, it's, but so it's just like the fact that I'm like the fact of the matter, like I was fired for not seeming happy at a job where all I'm supposed to be doing is basically just being an office grunt where right. I'd be just right. filing paperwork and putting stuff into a computer. I'm like, what am I supposed <laughs> to be doing? They wanted a monkey to perform for them is what so, they wanted. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically, that, that's basically my whole life. I lasted <laughs> one day at that job. So it just, so that's, yeah. Like, like Nikki said, my whole life yeah. has been like, you just don't seem happy. Well, I mean, I, I can't just smile on command right. unless you want yeah. to pay me, unless you want to pay me to be a motive. I'm not going to do right. it. Sorry. And so the only time I really times- show expression is when I'm acting. Yeah. yeah that yeah. literally, literally if he's on a stage, this motherfucker got so much emotion. You would think he's two fucking mm-hmm. people. You take the, the, like literally the second he steps off the stage or right before he goes on, it's just fucking vacant. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that because like, quite honestly, like it's really refreshing to not look at somebody's face and have to like piece apart the fucking puzzle. Right. All I got to do is ask him, dude, you pissed. I wear my neurotypical mask on stage when I'm acting. Yeah. Like, and he's fucking great at, and honest God, Steve is a damn good actor and shit in my estimation. Right. Because he, he can fucking do that. He can turn on that fucking emotionality. Right. Right. But like, fuck, nobody gets this shit. And they're always like, oh, oh, he's so he's so intensely concentrating on something right now. You know, is Steve aggravated from work? No, he's not fucking aggravated. And to your point, Amanda, I've always felt like that at just about every fucking job. You know what? If you want me to fucking smile more, fucking pay me to smile. That it's not in my right. job description to fucking make you happy. Like, right. and I sound pissy about it because I've been... I've heard it so many fucking times that like they all want to be treated like fucking individuals and they want to be accepted for who they are. Fucking accept us. Like fucking right. most of us have a look on our face as if we don't want to be there because most of the time we fucking don't want to be there. Like, like right. I even my even my boss, even though she is so far one of the best bosses I've had in terms of like understanding me, because I feel yeah. like I feel like she's a little autistic. But so she one time was telling me, I forgot what news she was telling me but it was really good news um and she's like are you good excited news, i can't everyone. tell like, I, <laughs> she's she had to ask me she's like are you excited i can't tell i'm like oh yeah yes. i'm excited she's like i i can never tell if you're upset this is my excited face excited. <laughs> yeah this, this, this is, is my, my happy excited face. face so my sad like, face. I, 
I'd like to point out the it's one I'm like Blue Steel. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, Blue Steel. Yeah, 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 from oh, Zoolander. Zoolander. Like when Zoolander. I'm. When I'm manic, I, I got a fuck ton of emotion and I express like a motherfucker, right? Like I'm up yeah. and I'm energetic and I'm positive and I'm ah, and like people like fucking dig that and they fucking jump on and get inspired by it and shit. The second that mania starts to come the fuck down and the second it starts to go back to internalized fucking emotionality again, people are always like, oh my God, Nick, is there a problem? No, it's just now I'm back to fucking normal. Like, right. well, but you sound really pissed off. Can I help you with that? No, you can walk away now, though. And I'm not saying no. that because I'm pissed with them or I, I like I'm trying to say they're insignificant. It's literally like, OK, the conversation's done. I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. I mean, he does refer to them as piss ants, but. <laughs> Actually, I used to and I caught this from my brother and I'm going to blame him oh, every day pain. that I have this expression in my vocabulary, in my fucking vernacular. When I get pissed off enough, I'm like, stop wasting my fucking oxygen. You okay. were you were not worth the flesh you're printed on. Now, my brother once yeah. said that as a joke around me, but I was way fucking young and quite honestly, way fucking autistic. And so now <laughs> it just fucking stuck. So when people piss yeah. me off, I'm like, you're wasting flesh. Listen, Just end it. Daria, are you okay? <laughs> Make sure you're doing okay yeah. right now. <laughs> <clears throat> we're, we're just checking in because we're uh, trying not to read your mind. Blink twice like, if I you're like okay. <laughs> oh, God. Not the eye twitching. Oh, God. Oh, no. Um, but I, I like the I like the jo- like I like the joke of, like, there is a tree right now wasting its time providing you oxygen. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, the mm-hmm. fuck you're wasting time money and bo- both of our lives right now by fucking checking in with my emotional state here's an idea stop right. trying to read my mind well yeah. it's like my uh, my office in my in my building mm-hmm. is i keep the i keep the door open unless i just want to shut everyone else out and i've told my boss that it's like she's like you can always close the door if you want. I just don't want to people anymore <laughs> and she's used that phrase she's like if you don't want to people i'm like okay thank god because i will literally if i just don't want to deal with anybody because mm. where i my office is the call center is also in the in that same office. So oh, okay. if I just don't want to, if I'm just overwhelmed by everyone, yeah. I will close the door. But I, if I have the door open, I will sometimes just have random ass people walk by my mm. door and be like, "Is everything okay?" And I just will be focused on something, and I go, mm-hmm. "Yeah, why?" And they're like, "You just look mad." Mm. Nope, just I've... doing a report. Hold just on, doing a report. So they'd open your filing cabinet and go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Starting um, my favorite story. So, so Amanda, I've got to ask, because if I was in that situation, the, after a couple of times of somebody fucking asking that, I would have to fuck with them. Have you ever looked up from the desk and gone, no, my dog died, <laughs> and just let them react to it? Because obviously they want to feel important because they're asking you how, how you're doing it and they want to show I- you concern but really it's they, they want to be there for somebody. You, you ever see those signs that they have, like people put... um for like animals or pets mm-hmm. and it says please don't b- disturb the dog he's yeah. okay yeah put that on your door yeah. <laughs> please please don't yeah. disturb the amanda I, I, she's okay i don't tap do on the glass a, i do have a sign i do have a sign that i made i made a meme it's yeah. the lionel richie hello and then it's like i have a sign that says hello is it me you're looking for and then the caption says if uh if you need me please knock i'm i i promise i'm available and i'll put that sign up if i close the door and you're still allowed to come in the door but if yeah. you if i don't want you coming in i will take the sign down there you go. But um, there you go. but I have done that whole thing with messing with someone right. where I have a co I had a coworker that just was annoying the absolute fuck out of me, mm-hmm. and she she is ADHD to the absolute max, like absolute max. She's been diagnosed. She, she's with dialed up to eleven. Yes, all yeah. the time, and she one time was just bothering me like constantly just not shutting up, and then she's like, "Are you okay? Like you're not really responding." I'm like, "Yeah, my dad died. Shut up." And so just, <laughs> just just to get her to stop. And I'm just like, oh she's like, oh my God, really? I go, no, just stop talking to me. Just, I'm sorry. I if I if I worked there, the second I heard that come out of somebody's office, I'm dying laughing. I don't care if it's actually <laughs> true or not. I'm just dying laughing at that point. Uh, and if somebody's like, why are you laughing about a parent dying? I'm like, I ain't laughing about that, but that's fucking funny. Mm. So uh, uh, whole, being offensive like, is great. The whole- yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was actually gonna say I was actually that. gonna say something. I was gonna say something. It's like the whole like it's kind of like a little kind of ties in the mm. whole. Yes. If you people being offended, the fact that we just don't show emotion, right? Like just or just yeah. have blank expressions. It's like they're almost like, well, how dare you not perform for me, you monkey? It's right. like how dare yeah. you not like show basically. It's like I don't need to do that for you. I don't need to emote right. for you. I don't. I'm like I unless you want to like I said personally pay me more. 
yeah. I'm not going to do that. And so turn I'm not here just smiling on, at you. on the music box it's a little so, bit harder for me yeah, and I'll right. perform. It's like maybe the Jack in the Box will come out. Yeah. But it's like maybe. Like, what the fuck? It's like, don't do that. Um, like, it's like they get offended that yeah. I'm just not. That we're not the way playing they think their I game. Act. Right. Yeah, like I'm and not. I'm not doing this social to. game. Yeah, I'm not doing this new, like this social game that they think I should be. I'm like, I'm not a right. player in this. Okay, just I'm here to do my job. I'm not here to perform for you. Okay, right. just leave Ooh. me alone. Let, let's hold them to our game, the Tism mm-hmm. game. Ooh, try right. to be honest for the first time in your fucking life. Say something yeah, right. honest. And be blunt. Once. Be blunt and like just stop yeah. emoting. Be, stop emoting. Be blunt. Tell me what you're feeling. I be don't direct. Be direct. I mean, the kind well, of being. Do I look fat in these jeans? Tell me the one fucking time in your goddamn life you're going to be honest. <laughs> right. So I, I'm so like, sorry to that's... take the the very female question kind of for that, but like, come on. Okay. I like I've had exes who were just like, if I ask you if I look pretty, it's because I want you to reassure me that I am. And I was like, but if it looks fucking bad on you, why shouldn't I tell you that? And they were like, like right. no, I, I want you know. to let me know I'm pretty. And I'm like, well, fucking put on an outfit that makes you pretty then. Mm-hmm. And right. of course that was wrong somehow, but like in context, I get, it. I'm a fucking guy talking to a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the fucking implication of that one. But like the point to that is just, if, if you don't want an honest answer, then don't fucking ask me an honest question. Yes. If you yes. want me to lie to you, then say, tell me I'm pretty. All right. You're gorgeous. Right. Right. Like my wife, my current wife, okay, who I love to death because of fucking she wants me to be my autistic self. She wants Mm -hmm. me to be me 100 percent of the time. Granted, we're still figuring out what the fuck that actually means. We're trying to figure out what that means in the fucking relationship. But like the other day she goes, you still find me sexy. And I went, yes. And she was like, I need you to tell me. And I said, I find you very sexy. And she was like, how sexy? And I said, sexy enough that unfortunately we've got kids around. Otherwise, we'd both be naked. And she goes, thank you. And just walked the (laughs) fuck away. Because that's Mm -hmm. what she wanted. She wanted reassurance that I'm still there. I still find her attractive. But she knew how to ask me. She knew how to get me to be honest with it. Because she didn't say, am I pretty? No, she said, tell me I'm sexy. And I said it. Why? Because if I didn't feel that way, even if like I have a moment in time and we've all been in relationships where there are moments where we're like, fuck this partner, even if it's for a five second period of time, because they just did some real dumb shit. Right. Even if I'm having that moment and she asks, she's okay with me saying nope and walking the fuck away because she knows it's here in that much time. Right. 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 I, th- I thought of a really stupid joke. So it's like, so right. she doesn't want you to beat her on the bush so you can beat her bush is what you're right. saying. Right. It- <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And actually, weirdly enough, she had a similar idea to that, but it wasn't the word bush. She said something about a hole in <laughs> a stick. Um, oh, and so, uh, by the way, my, my wife is also in the improv group with us. It's actually one of the oh, reasons gotcha. why me and her got together. And she is just as dirty as we are when it comes to fucking jokes. I like I actually, she, uh, I have good stage chemistry with his wife. Yes, actually he has very good sca- stage chem- oh, uh, so he chemistry. Oh, so he has to watch, watch out then. Hmm? No, yeah. no. Like I would never be jealous <laughs> now of let's them. let's leave room for Mm-mm. Jesus now. Uh, yeah, no. let's leave room for Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I, no, I wouldn't like, be willing to go that far with her on stage anyway. Or yeah, anywhere, I'm hoping. Well, yeah. I mean, shit happens. Uh, but if we um, absolutely had to like do a scene yeah. where we kissed or something, maybe I would do it. But like, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, but in improv, you don't ever have to have a no, scene no. where you. I'm kiss. just saying, like, yeah, yeah, for I a would, play yeah. or something. Like me and her had pretty good chemistry when we're doing plays and stuff. I'd actually rather kiss a stranger than Natalie because I feel I would. I would rather kiss a no. I don't want to kiss anybody. I got fucking problems yeah, with people getting to my face. I've known her. This, yeah, I don't want to. I've known her for so long yeah. that it just feels mm. weird. That's another thing, and and y'all can maybe attest to this too. I've had exes get offended because I have problems with people getting close to my face. I don't I don't like the whole like fucking nine minute fucking open mouthy kiss fucking shit. Little packs. I'm I'm okay with that because that's as long as I can stand getting that close to somebody's fucking face, right? Mm-hmm. Exes had fucking problems with this, and they're like, "Cause you don't love me, or you don't not affectionate." My wife, I explained the awkward fucking feeling and the like the fucking like spine fucking ugh, feeling that I get when something gets that close to my fucking face. Like me and him talked about getting these fucking pop filters. And I said, dude, I'm, I'm worried about it because it's getting close to my face. 
And yeah. he, and like when we first set it up, he was like, how you feeling? We can take it down if you want, if you need to, but how you feeling? It took a little while to get used to it. But like Natalie's more than cool with it. And she's like, I need a kiss right now and I'll kiss her. But she doesn't, she doesn't need to like fucking like ah, right, a lot. Right. right. And, and a lot of my exes were like, oh, it's because you don't care about me as much as I care about you. And I'm like, sure, that's what it is. Fucking doors that way. Because I just, I got pissy with it eventually, right? I, did mm -hmm. Do you guys have, have uh, proximity issues or shit? Nope. Um, nobody can relate. For me, got it. No, I, I, no, I, I was can. saying something, sir. Jesus well, Christ. I, I wanted to make the it. joke, Amanda. Go ahead. <laughs> and she called saying, me like, sir. I... Am I really that much yeah. older than everybody? Holy shit. She called me sir. Yes. Okay, oh, boomer. She called everybody sir. Oh, she called me a fucking <laughs> boomer. Oh, my God. I'm only 43. Jesus. Yeah, might as well be a boomer. Amanda, how but old are you? I'm 34. Fuck. Nikki? 33. Fuck. Now, I don't need to ask you. I know you're in your late 30s. Fuck. Mm -hmm. All right. I like, am the I, old I asshole. Go ahead. I don't necessarily like people touching, like, my back. Like, necessarily, like, when I don't, I, I like hugs. But when people, if someone, like, goes to put her arm around my, around me, or, like, around my shoulders, I'm just, like, stop. So uh, do that to me. Okay, so yeah, like yeah. when it comes to dancing and the and the man has to put his hand uh, uh, on I your lower dance. back. What? I don't dance. No. All right, I don't Phil dance. Collins, no. calm the fuck down. I'm just kidding. So mm -hmm. wait, you can't dance or you don't like to dance? That was a Genesis joke. Both. It was. What? <laughs> she said both. She said both. No, both. no, fair, 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 right? Fair. I don't like shit getting close to my fucking face. I don't like, definitely don't like intimate moments close to my fucking face. And you don't like people touching your back. And to dance, somebody would have to put their hand on your back. I get it. Mm -hmm. Or you just don't, don't like to fucking dance. I get that too. Mm -hmm. So Nikki, what's, what's your, what's one of your, um, eccentricities? Um, when it comes to proximity stuff, I'm not a big fan of like make out stuff either. Like okay. I don't like people Good. in my face that long, um, to the, the point, I don't one. even like things like touching my face at all. Ooh. I don't like, I don't like my, I know this might sound terrible, but like my youngest is level two mm -hmm. autistic and he likes to touch oh, your face. Your, yeah. He likes to touch you. Right. And so I have to explain to him, buddy, not, don't touch mommy's face. I mm -hmm. don't like it. It bothers me. And my kids will want to like, especially him will want to do that a lot. And I have to just take his hand and remind him, buddy, mommy doesn't like things by her face, you know? Yep. So it just explain it to him because as much as he needs to touch me yeah. to like get that sensory input, I'm, I'm teaching him a boundary by saying, I don't like my face being touched. Just like, you don't like yeah. certain things. I don't like certain things. And I guess it did become an issue with my husband before I really knew I was autistic. Like he's like, well, we never like, he likes to kiss. He likes to do that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I He's like, why don't you ever kiss me? And I'm like, cause I don't fucking yeah. want you in my face. There's smells. Yeah. There's mm, cause you, know you don't I mean? love like, me. I don't, yes. Yeah. Like, everything I don't you're like describing like, if your breath stinks. Get the fuck away from me. Like yeah. I literally can't handle it. It, it I could have even such be minty fucking fresh and I'm going. Eh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have such a strong sense of smell that like I can smell shit from like 10 miles away. Like I'll smell something. Nobody else smells. And I, it sensory wise, like it bothers me if there's a really strange smell or a smell mm -hmm. I can't place or something yeah and if your breath is even like slightly off like i can't handle it i don't smell and shit I from like a mile down like the road the whole... yeah yeah he's mm -hmm. the, he's yeah. just like same. that nikki yeah same so like i have a really strong sense of smell and i don't like stuff like stuff on my face i don't want right. your tongue in my mouth oh yeah like, yeah yep. me physical Creepy pain is, i don't I want your tongue in my mouth i can feel it mm. yeah same yep. so i don't like that at all so like the most i'm not saying i've never done it i've never made out but like mm. It's yeah. not my favorite thing to do. We're, and occasionally we, I will oblige him and kiss him for longer than two seconds. Mm -hmm. But like, that is like the most I can possibly handle. If, if I'm, uh, so I'm not long. a big fan of making out either, but I will say I, if I am intoxicated or high, it doesn't bother me as yes. much. Yes. If you Same. numb my shit a little bit, I'm good to go. Yeah. So actually, uh, my wife likes to take advantage of when I'm drinking. So like we rehearse on Friday take nights. Advantage. Jeez. Oh no, I don't mean, you know what? I'll take it whatever the fuck way you want. Like, I, whatever. I had, I had a um, question for Amanda. Actually. I think you've, you've said enough. Uh, Amanda. So you said you don't like to dance and you're not good at dancing. Uh, are you, I'm assuming, are you married or not married or? No, I'm not married. No. So if you were to get married, would you dance at your wedding? 
Would you like do it would, just for the, like, just, the? I would do it for the wedding, but it would be like the most awkward, like eighth grade dance. So you still have trouble, side like side sort of thing. You don't still have trouble yeah, getting into it. With rhythm, like Nikki knows, I have like I am so clumsy. I have no rhythm whatsoever. I'm just I'm just an awkward human. Okay, I stand awkward. I feel your like first I stand dance awkwardly. With your partner will mm -hmm. be like polka. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Put some weird owl on. It'll there be you go. Oh, fucking nice. Now that's what I call polka. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I like how you said you were going to ask something for Amanda and you were going to let her talk and then you fucking cut off every sentence I she said. I was commenting. No, 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 I'm just getting you back for fucking commentary. doing it to me. Uh, so are we going to talk about being offensive again or are we just... We gonna... have been actually. Sure. This entire yeah, time we actually we have, have been. been. Because if you think about it, all of the things that we don't like for touch, we, we focused on touch stuff. But all of that stuff, think about it. We have forced ourselves in life to engage in these behaviors because we felt a social imperative. If we think about right. it, somebody was forcing us to do some shit we didn't want to fucking do. Because How you fucking were... offensive is that? Because... But granted, we were the ones forcing ourselves. But it's still that... Because you were that. you were David Bowie and Queen. Yes, exactly. We were under pressure, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Like we absolutely were. I I agree with you. And goddamn, you explain this shit. You know where I'm going with it. You fucking say it. Considering I've talked so <clears> fucking <throat> much, according to you and like, according to them. Look at Amanda's face. Yeah, like how irritated she is with me. Thing? Do you have like stories <laughs> to contribute, Steve? Like one the like the RBF thing we talked about. But like, yeah. is there? Do you feel like you get sort of come at for jokes you make or just for the way you are <sighs> existing in the world. Yeah, I got, uh, I mean, I, I've been, I got in trouble at previous jobs for things I've said. Uh, I made a, a joke and it wasn't even a good joke. It was years ago. I worked when I was in my twenties. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I made like a, an ignorant Southerner joke, like a joke about being like an ignorant Southerner. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And the girl I worked with, wasn't even from the South. She grew up here, but she moved down to the South for a while and said, that's really ignorant. I don't believe you say that. You think all people from the South are stupid. I'm like, that's not what I said, but okay. Selected. She liberal white girl view is what she did. She liberal white girl view. She was offended yes. on someone else's I made like yes. a, like an ignorant yeah. redneck type joke. Right. It's like, like, okay. Right. But, um, tell stories about like your that. ex. Tell stories about your ex. What, what about your ex? She used to talk about it all the time. Like we need the gossip. Kills me. I don't. I don't know what stories you're talking about. Cool. So Steve had this girl that he was dating before the current one, and and she would always drop these little lines, these little hints. Now, granted, she is uh, she has a bit of an accent because she she come from not actually a different country, but a different part of the country where there's a bit of an accent, and she always would talk about how like lacking in excitement and enthusiasm this motherfucker has, right? But also, culturally speaking, her culture, very, very expressive, very, very, like, enthusiastic about shit and all. And so it was really interesting to hear her talk about him because I'm like, well, no shit, he white as fuck. But then it became very apparent to me that, no, she's actually, like, making criticisms about his autism. And, like, it became yeah. even more and more apparent and I know, Nikki, you asked Steve about, like, him to tell stories, but clearly he was like, I, I don't know what else to say. But I got stories for him because I'm the mouthpiece. You're like, you'll talk for him. Yeah, talk he's for him. the smart one. I'm the mouthpiece. <laughs> <clears throat> Although, we, you know, you haven't done a blog post for a while. And people well, like the blog about, posts. Um, like, hmm? I, so I made jokes at work that got me into trouble. Yeah. Also, another job. Um this is along the same line. It was like racially insensitive, but it wasn't like racist necessarily. But but the joke. So I used to work with a bunch of Spanish people. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and I don't remember what it was that they were talking about. Um, something came up and then mm -hmm. some of them were talking in Spanish to each other and I understood what they were saying. Mm -hmm. But then I just made like a sarcastic joke. So we speak English in this country, like as a joke. <sighs> yeah. But they apparently were offended by that. Or not not all of them. One person was. One person complained. Yeah, but to me, that doesn't that's not you making fun of Spanish people or the fact that they're even speaking Spanish. You're you're mocking those assholes right. who say that fucking Which shit. Which is what I was right. doing. And I did it in an accent. It wasn't even my voice. Right. But I got I got written up for that. So people wanting to be pissed off because they want to be pissed but off. But it was just one one girl who yeah. got offended by it. The rest of the people didn't give a shit. So it was like, wait, 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 what color was the girl? Oh, she was Spanish. Oh, I but thought you were going to say fucking white. No, because it would have made way more sense to me. But 
like obviously I don't feel that way. And the funny right. thing is like, the person who reported me actually we used to speak Spanish to each other all the time. <gasps> so like, she knew that I spoke Spanish and that I like did, I didn't have a problem with her speaking Spanish. It was just I was joking. Like wait, making, wait, wait. Were you dating that certain person no. at that time? Oh, okay. I was about to say because if you were dating that certain person this at is that just time, the, how in the fuck could this anybody This was just a lady I worked with racist. that I used to like make jokes with and we no, talked. Right. The funny thing we joked around all the time, but apparently that particular joke she didn't like. No I'm shit. I'm assuming that like somebody had been like racist towards her at some point or said yeah. something oh, like yeah. that to her, but oh, they were guarantee. serious about it, even though I was kidding. <clears throat> yeah. Um and I can see why somebody'd be offended by that, but I just kind of blurted it out. Like I didn't really think about it. When I said it, it just kind of yeah. like verbal diarrhea. I said it as a joke, not realizing that somebody might find it offensive. But obviously, I don't think that I don't have a problem with people speaking Spanish or any right. language. And I right. fucking used to speak Spanish with these people. So mm -hmm. they should have put it in the context of Steve was making a sarcastic joke, but they fucking I was did. making fun of people who are like bigoted about right. that kind of stuff. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah. But I feel like it's, it's ironic to me that we are as autistic people, neurodivergent mm -hmm. people, we are given the stereotypical we don't get the joke we right. don't understand sarcasm yet mm. i feel like we are the first ones to get when someone is not serious about right. what they have just said and are the ones to take offense the least mm. you know or at least that's what i have experienced it doesn't mean that every autistic person no. you know fits that bubble it's just i feel like I understand, like, I can mm -hmm. see when someone's truly meaning what they're saying and when they're just kidding and mm -hmm. everyone else misses it. And it's like, but I'm the one who's supposed to not understand the joke here. But I, I'm the one who usually gets it. It's like, no, you're getting bent out of shape over absolutely nothing. They were literally just kidding. How did you not see that? I think, mm -hmm. I think yet, also in my situation, yeah. though, my color might have played a factor into it, though, because like yes. I was with a bunch of like. Uh, Latino you people, and situation. I was a white guy. Right. Yes, and I was right. just trying to joke around with them because we joked around all the time about stuff. So like, I was trying to be playful, and at mm -hmm. that moment, maybe it wasn't right. appropriate. Um, I I used to have uh, an analogy for this that it, no, not an analogy. Anyway, I'm going to keep talking. So I used to have a way of explaining this uh, uh, years ago, even before I, I knew I was autistic, and even before I, I knew that there was this communication difference in autism and non-autistic people. Some people, when they hear a statement, and this is going to be a real ignorant fucking stereotype statement, uh, women can't change the tire on a car. Some people translate, all women can't change. Some people will translate, some women can't change a tire on a car. And then some people will put, the women he has, in his experience, women cannot right and the three of those yeah. are three very very different statements but it sounds it seems like to me that nowadays we haven't gotten to a point where we're putting those three pieces on there it's always all right and yeah. if you are a white person or a person of color or a woman or I actually gay had this or argument with somebody straight, the other day people will <clears> translate <throat> it for you all right so a bunch of people on facebook mm -hmm. there's somebody that um we're, I think we're, we both are friends with them on Facebook. Anyway, oh, okay. they posted this thing about um, the phrase men are trash. Uh. Mm -hmm. There's this phrase people say like men, men are trash. And then, but they were saying that it doesn't mean not all, all men are men. trash. But when you say men <laughs> right. is trash, but I say, well, I don't really care one way or the other if you want to say that. But to me, if mm -hmm. you say men are trash, it sounds like the all is implied. So that's right. that was actually my point by the three different statements. I always imply when I'm looking at any of those kinds of statements, I always imply in that person's experience, men are trash. And so I automatically go with, well, they've been fucking hurt by some dude. And that's what they're expressing is some level of frustration, anger or fucking bitterness or hate or jealousy, whatever. I, it seems to me that neurotypical folk like to interject the word all more. And to your point, Nikki, I think autistic people, because of the way what we've had to deal with in our translation of the other world, I think we now know and look at those three different pieces that I mentioned far more. I mean, obviously, right. there are certain ones of us in the community who just want to What do you mean by the other world? Do we all receive like a handbook for the recently deceased? Yes. Yes, we do. Is this like the yeah. upside down? Yes, exactly. Yeah, upside down. yeah. Yeah. What you guys lost your your manual there? Okay, let me send yeah, you the yeah, PDF. Yeah, the other world in Beetlejuice. Like, is this Beetlejuice? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, what, what world are we going to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Outworld, but maybe? I feel like Mortal Kombat. Going uh, back to the work thing a lot, I yeah. feel like my experience with this has happened quite a bit at work as well, especially 
because I was a stay at home mom for seven years. So I okay. didn't really like, I, I didn't really experience the work thing until about two. I've been at she this job feral. for just over two she years. Came, she became socially feral. Just yeah, I became socially feral. So like I, I went it's better back than becoming to Will work Ferrell. And- <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'd be, uh, Will Ferrell's awesome. Yeah, Will Ferrell's cool to me. I like Will Ferrell unless he's recently done something to get himself canceled. I, uh, I like Will Ferrell. But anyway, he's a hairy uh, man. I, <laughs> I feel. <laughs> I feel like I've had issues with people at work and it seems to be the issues were with the youngest people at work. Okay. Because I, and I, I say people generally, it's really just one person, but the feedback I have received from the Gen Z going back to work. <clears throat> yes. The feedback I have received since going back to work is with my directness. Mm, like yeah. I am very to the point. They call right. me, I'm very black and white, which yes. I don't agree with whatsoever. I don't agree that I'm black and white. I agree that I'm poignant and that I'm to the point and I'm direct. Right. But I don't think the black and white and direct are the same thing. So no. uh, they I'm think it direct. does though. They think those two yes, are the exact they think same it's fucking the same thing. thing. Yeah. So they're trying to pigeonhole me into this place of, oh, well, well, that's just how she is. She's just direct, or this is just how mm-hmm. she how she operates. Has anyone called and you my a boss, boss bitch? Understands Ooh. That. Yeah, just a bitch, really. Oh. But like but I technically am a boss bitch now. I am an assistant manager there. So oh, I am like one of the boss bitches. I call myself the bootleg boss lady because I'm like, I am a boss lady, but I can't actually do anything to you. So like I am in charge, oh. but I can't fire you. So I'm like the bootleg boss lady. And so like I <clears throat> I am pigeonholed in this, in this pocket of I am bitchy because I'm direct, mm-hmm. right? And I've actually gotten that most of my life. Would you agree, Amanda, that most people said that about me in high school? Like, oh, she's bitchy because she's direct, right? Right. Yeah. yeah like so probably, was, probably most of our high school, like, cause we've known each other since freshman year that people yeah. just always assume Nikki was a bitch. Hold on. Yeah. You, this is what I used to get this reaction. I don't know if you've ever gotten this. People used to always be like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cause yeah. I would say something and they were just so in awe that I would say that. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, like that's not appropriate. Or that, why would you say that? And I'm like, uh-huh. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Yeah. I always yeah. heard, uh, why would you say that you just ruined our chance? And I said, Ch- chance at what? And they were like, getting some or some shit like that. And I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. real. I didn't realize that's the goal. I, I didn't realize we were working towards yeah. that. Um, I well, just thought we were also, talking to people. I've struggled with the fact of like, you talk about how the brutally honest thing, right? Yeah. And the direct thing. I've in my life have struggled to understand when someone is actually looking for honesty and when someone is looking for you to placate them. Right. Yeah. So it's like, me too. do you really want, like you were saying with your wife, like, do you mm-hmm. really or the want me to Reddit be honest thing with you that right I now? mentioned? Yeah. Or the Reddit thing. Right. Yep. Or do you want me to placate you in this moment? And right. it's like when someone's coming to me with their problems, like that's when another issue I've had at work is like, if there's a coworker coming to me with an issue mm-hmm. and I have a simple solution for your fucking problem, I'm assuming you want my solution or you wouldn't have come and talked to me mm. about it. I'm assuming you want my advice or sometimes I wouldn't, people you wouldn't just have want to bitch. Told me about it. <laughs> right. And, so and you probably already Amanda know this. About this. Listen for the question mark. When they right. say, when well, when it ends with what do you think? Free reign yeah, right there. Free offer. fucking reign. Right. So I right. Well, that Amanda was a very hard lesson for me to learn. Too. Yes. Go ahead. Amanda and I have talked about this. We we've said you said it best, I think. You were like something along the lines of are you looking being okay with saying are you looking for a solution or are you just wanting to vent? Like mm-hmm. being okay to ask that question to someone you're having a conversation with. Yes. Because then it tells me, it tells my brain, you just need to listen right now. They're not looking for a solution or I need to be actively listening to be able to give you the proper solution to your problem. Yep. Right. Am I just here as a vessel to receive whatever you need to say right now to help yourself feel better? Or are you actively looking for my advice? Mm-hmm. So I've had to learn to meter that, but my directness got me to the position I'm in. It's what everybody doesn't like about me, but it Being got a me to the place bitch? where... Mm-hmm. What now? Oh, well, you said it's gotten you to the place you were at. You mean being a bootleg bitch? Sorry, yeah, being bootleg a bootleg bitch? Bit, being the bootleg boss lady, yes. Oh, boss lady. That's what you meant, being a boss. Bootleg boss lady, yes. So it got me to the position I'm in yeah. because my actual boss lady mm-hmm. it respects the fact that I see what needs to be fucking done and I just do it. She doesn't have to right. baby me. She doesn't have to hold my hand. She, does, she knows that if she leaves me with something, mm-hmm. I will finish that task or die trying. That right. is what I'm good at. 
That's, right? so, that's my boss too. Mm-hmm. Here's yeah, a, so uh, that is what got me to where I am, yet it's what everybody hates me for. And I've battled that mm, my whole life. I've right. climbed ladders that I should not have been able to climb at this position as quickly as I have done it. I have raised my pay by $5 an hour and gained two extra roles at this job in less than two years mm-hmm. because I am a direct boss bitch. That's what I do. Right. Right. So, so he, but he, it's what I'm hated for at the same time. Yeah. I wanted to share a um, piece of advice unsolicited. So here I am mansplaining to you. No, go wait, for wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Um, is there a question mark? Hold on. <laughs> so, uh, no, because I have experience with this. So one thing that, uh, I've had the same issues that you guys have had as far as like figuring out when people just want to complain. You didn't start with, well, actually when people want to just <laughs> complain and when somebody actually wants advice. So, but a- as a manager, cause I've worked in several management positions, my approach has changed on that. So, um, yeah. if somebody comes to me with a particular problem, I'll listen to them, let them vent. If it seems like they actually want some help with it. I won't actually give them the solution. I'll try to lead them to the solution because it. Yeah. most people learn better that way. If you ask them questions to lead them to the answer themselves, rather than just giving them the answer. And a lot of times, if you do just give them the answer, people will, they'll come across, they'll think you're being an asshole or being a smart ass or being a know-it-all. Yeah. And it also doesn't help people learn unless they do it on their own. Okay. So I've had issues with both those ways. One, when I try to lead somebody, I get people to say to me, I sound kind of fucking sending. But then on, when I just fucking tell them what the fuck to do, they're like, it's probably well, the, I like it better when you're direct. You might I'm be like, asking the wrong kind of questions or it could be your tone. But like, oh, my yeah. tone, you, need, you mean actually, that thing I can't tone. fucking change? There's a book I have somewhere that actually lists, they have like two pages full of like 30 or 40 different questions uh-huh. of the types of questions to ask to help to lead somebody to the solution themselves. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, oh, no, I don't doubt that you have that fucking book, but I don't, I, I believe very it's thoroughly. By somebody who has a lot of experience has been very successful. A, as a manager, right? Yes. Right. So he had to trial and error, figure out those questions. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so, it's, like, so the other thing I was going to say is like, both of you guys talked about being in the positions you're in because, you know, your boss gives you a task, you get it done. One of the issues that I currently have with the job is my boss wants me to take more initiative. And I don't doubt that that's something a boss wants out of a, 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 a supervisee, a, a subordinate is to somebody who takes initiative, right? My only issue with that, and I think it's part of TISM or just I'm fucking dumb. I don't know what the fuck she wants done. Like, I don't know I, what the list of tasks I, is. And so I, I say, just tell me what you want done. And she at one point said, and I think it was said out of frustration that day. She said, well, I shouldn't have to tell you. And I went, then how am I supposed to know? And she goes, you already know what I have to do. And I was like, I I don't know what you're working on though. Like, I don't know what you're in the middle of doing. So why would I jump on a task that you're in the middle of doing? Like, I don't know. That's wasted fucking time. And then she was like, well, but you know, all of the things I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, but, I don't know which ones I'm actually allowed because we have different degrees. So certain tasks she has to do for a, from a legal standpoint. So, and some of those tasks, I, I know that they need to be done, but I know she has to do them, but then I still get, you should have taken initiative for fucking what? My, my, my other best friend, we had like a, kind of like a, we had like a, um, a head to head. Wow. I can't talk like a head to head, like argument. Yeah. We never really argue, but it basically I was at his house and he was upset that I did not help him with some sort of thing. And then he got, he like snapped at me. Mm-hmm. So I said, Hey, while you're up, can you give me, I was like, can you give me his towel? And then yeah. he like snapped at me like, Oh sure. I'll just do one more other thing. Mm. And then I got really upset over it. And then he, so we ended up talking later um, at my house, like a couple days later. And I go, he goes, he's like, I have had such dis- decision to fatigue. I can't talk. Decision fatigue. He's like, I'm yes. just, I'm tired of having to relegate tasks. I'm tired of having to ask people to do things. I'm like, but if I don't know what you want, I can't do it. Like, I can't right. assume what you want. Like, if you have to ask me. Right. Like, I'm sorry that you, Directly, your job in involves you asking to mm-hmm. people to do things, but I am not one of the people that are under you. So I am your best friend. So I can't yeah. be expected to just know what you want when you want it you have to ask me to do it i mean i don't read minds yeah right 
And so like the whole like my boss, like my boss doesn't really have the issue where you're about like, you know, take initiative, that sort of thing. She's I always tell her, it's like, if you just give me a list of tasks and just leave me alone, I will I will get that shit done. So so for about a week, that's what she was doing. She would write down or email me. Here's what I need you to finish by the end of the day. Here are things that I just need done at some point. Right. So she gave me a time frame. She told me what was needed. She set the priority of what needs to be done. All that shit got done in the time frame she asked because I pride myself on my ability to fucking make timelines. Right. Right. But all those extra tasks that were just like, yeah, at some point, some of them still aren't fucking done. Why? Because Mm -hmm. do them eventually. All right. Well, eventually I'll fucking remember to do them. And she like fucking bitched at me about one of them because it ended up being overdue. And I showed her the email and said, you didn't tell me when it was due. I had no idea that there was a fucking time frame for this fucking thing. And she goes, well, when I say ASAP, I mean today. And I said, then why didn't you write today? It's right. the you same, be, it, like it's one vague. extra letter. You can't be vague with us, okay? Right, like, <laughs> like but that's vague. what I tried to explain. And she said, well, you're an adult. You should know how. And I was like, yep, now you're okay, letting me know where you stand. An intellectual disability. Well, hold on. It's like that covered by law. She, and this is an accommodation that I'm asking well, you for, which is to please so, give me a timeline. Yeah, well, I can't go into another. When we're not recording, remind me to explain something that's on a piece of paper in direct relation yeah. to that. So this whole fucking thing, like, by the way, I have no issue in the fact that I still work there and I'm talking about this, like fucking on a podcast. She doesn't listen to this. In fact, nobody I work with fucking listens to this. Right. At fucking all. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm not bitter at all because none of my coworkers support my comedy group or this. (laughs) Not better. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I actually had a point. Uh, um, you had a point? I did. I oh, okay. I actually had a I fucking direction I was going with with this, but then well, I, I had fucking... I had the same experience at my last job. Hold, hold. by the way, as far well, as I'm like, I'm like saying, it's like if you care, if you care, I also have. I think he was thinking about things. something. No, like no, I'm uh, trying to grab my. They thought were, of it. I, it's gone. Fuck they would they it. would Please, tell me, you know, oh, we, well. They would, you're doing all X, Y, and Z. Perfect. That's all great. Awesome. But we want you to, we want you to take on, uh, like we want you to take on more, more responsibility. I'm like, well, what, what things do you want me to do? They would never actually tell me what they wanted me to do. So like I started making up things on my own to do and like, well, not those things. I'm like, well, then what do you want me to do? Right. Sorry. I'm getting so, but that's, that's the fucking battle. We need you to think, we need you to step up. What do you mean by step up? Right. Like. Fuck, if my sergeant in the army fucking got the fact that you have to fucking tell me what the fuck to do, that I'm not going to fucking know to fucking sweep Nick, the fucking bay. We need you to you step up. Tell me. Like, we need you to step up. God damn it. And and that's the thing, though. People go, you're smart enough to know. No, motherfucker. I memorized a whole bunch of fucking facts. I'm not fucking smart enough to one thing or another. It's not about smart or not. It's literally how Amanda, I think. Amanda, I need and you to step point, up. Yeah. And to step up. And to the point I was thinking of, to the point I was thinking of, and Amanda just kind of triggered this for me, not trigger in a bad way, but like prompted this. I triggered you. Oh God. No, no, no. I don't look at the word trigger as always a bad thing, by the way. Trigger just means the fucking thing that precipitated. Anyway, um, with my wife, another moment with my wife. Okay. For a very long time, she did the normal, uh, uh, wife and a uh, female in a relationship thing. She fucking did a bunch of fucking tasks and got pissy that my ass was sitting on the couch. Right. And she would bitch to her mama and tell her friends, Oh my guy, he just, Oh, just like every other man just sits there. Well, one day she was cooking and getting the laundry and she was managing our level two daughter. And I'm sitting on the fucking couch reading something on Facebook. Right. She got so frustrated. She was like, can't you tell I'm getting frustrated? And I said, no, at what point did you ask me to help? And she goes, I shouldn't have to ask you. And I said, well, I didn't fucking notice. I was a little absorbed in something else. And she was like, I need you to pay attention. And I said, I was paying attention to this. What do you need? And she goes, well, why can't you help me cook? And I said, I can. You just didn't ask. You have to ask. You have right. to ask. ask. Like, I can't just assume. Right. Like, it's and like, what if I, what if I got, just got up and started helping cook? You probably, what if you just all of a sudden were like, well, get out of the fucking kitchen. I'll take care of it. Right. So. And that was my, like, I didn't even notice, by the way, 
have to fucking change. And it's not the whole like selective fucking ignoring that like stereotypically males do. It's literally, I didn't know half the fucking shit that was going on around me. I was kind of hyper-focused on what the fuck I was doing. Oh man, I was going down a weird fucking rabbit hole about fucking a behavior fucking thing. Anyway, but then she goes, okay, well, how do I tell you? And I said, why don't you just do it the most basic way possible? Nick, laundry, go. And she was like, well, isn't that rude? And I went, no, it's what you want and when you want it. Fucking tell me. And she yeah, was like, well, I but I don't want to tell, I don't want to boss you around. And I said, you're not, you're letting me know what you need me to do when you need me to do it. And that's it. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I told my friend when we had our yeah. argument. It's like, just, just what have I ever, like I told him, like, what have I ever just outright denied helping you? Right. Like, yes. So when you asked me to do something, what have I ever denied? Like, except as a joke, like, no, I'm not going to fucking do it as I get up to go do it. And so it's like, what have I ever like actually denied or said no? for you to like need help with something yes can you think of a can you think of a time no you can't so if you just have to ask me like i understand you're tired of asking people to do things but i just i can't assume what you want like i can't just know what you want so you just have to ask me and because i will help you i'm a very helpful person i'm a very generous giving person but i just have to be told this is what you need me to do and this is when you need me right. to do it I am so validated right now. I got to let all of, all three of you know, I feel so fucking <laughs> validated by this conversation today, but that's also You're part welcome. of what's like driving my energy and my reactions is I honest to God feel super fucking validated by the two of you because <laughs> I feel, I don't feel like I'm the only fucking one. It's that fucking yeah. feeling that we all fucking have on a regular basis. We're the only fucking ones who think, feel, get affected by all of that kind of shit. Like that response right there, right? Like I've had that moment many, many a times of like, I, like you said, sometimes I'll say no, but I'm only saying no just to fucking say no. Of course, I'm going to fucking do it. I've had those moments. In fact, my, my wife now, when I go, no, she's like, fucking do it. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, like it's fuck just your feelings. Fuck yeah. Your feelings. Like, fuck your feelings. Go. Yeah. And I fucking do it. Because I'm not actually saying, no, I won't do it. It's just a gut fucking thing. of like, mm -mm. right? Like, yeah. but I feel fucking validated that somebody else has that <clears throat> same fucking reaction. And then I'm hearing another right. autist say, look, this is how it is. Just fucking ask me to do it. And in fact, mm -hmm. I don't even need you to form it as a question. I just need enough fucking words to know. Nick, laundry, mm -hmm. now. I'm good. Like, it's why I worked yeah. out in the military so fucking well. Well, don't ask anybody I served with because I don't think they agree that I was a very good soldier. I'll, I'll actually say I wasn't a very good soldier. But I was good in this point. I didn't need all the extra fucking words. Like, I'm a wordy motherfucker. Yeah. I don't need none of y'all to be wordy. I just need y'all to say, Nick, shut up now. Right. Like, but I think that ties back into the offense thing, too, because it's like it does. someone can be direct with you. Right. right. And you're not going to immediately assume that they're being an asshole or a bitch right. or whatever. You're like, thank you for being direct with me. Now Except I know exactly I what is expected and I can go mm, do that. Mm, right. Mm. So now I know exactly what you need right. and I can go make that happen. And I've been I've had to tell people that a lot, too. I, I greet new employees mm -hmm. with this disclaimer. Right. Like yeah. I have a disclaimer. Yeah. I'm like, listen. I'm autistic. This is how I do things. I am going to sound at times direct. I am mm -hmm. not going to to check my own tone sometimes, especially <laughs> if it's busy in here and we have a lot to do. There's a lot of things that are going on and I am going to drop the mask occasionally and not address mm -hmm. you in the way you need me to address you or not present in a way you're expecting me to present as someone who is a coworker or someone who is in charge of you, right? right. So right. here's what I need from you. Here's what I need from you. I need you to very bluntly tell me you're being an asshole right now. Mm. And then I can go, oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Or I can say to you, I fucking meant it. And this is why I'm being an asshole to you right now. Yep. Right. So like, I like need you'll, you you'll to know tell when me, I'm an asshole. Like you'll know correct. for sure mm. when I'm being an asshole. If you, I beg people, please, if you are confused about something I have said to you, if you think I have said something rudely to mm -hmm. you, if you feel that I am not being sensitive or I am being a bitch or I'm targeting you in some way for something that is yeah. happening, please come to me and tell me that it's happening so that I can correct it with you or explain why it's happening or apologize for it happening. I can't fix a problem I don't know about. Right. right. So you right. have to come to talk to me <clears throat> and I will not be confrontational with you during that time. I will, I will sincerely apologize and mean it if, I, cause nine times out of 10, I do not mean to be an asshole. 
right? right. I'm just trying to do my job mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to help you do your job and help the team work as a whole. And that's sometime going to come off as direct and to the point. And, and I get that, that so many people don't really respond to that. And I am working on it. It's not something that I'm just like, this is how I am deal with it. I'm presenting that as an option to let them know that this is something I'm aware about and I'm working on it. So if you need to tell me something, just come tell me. I am not going to be offended by the fact that you feel like you need to tell me I did something wrong. Like I'm open right. to, I'm open to the criticism and I'm open to, you know, meeting you where you're at in this situation because I know I have a tendency to come off this way. Mm -hmm. So it's not a scapegoat for me to say, this is just how I am fucking deal with it. It's more of a me giving that person the, the option to be like, listen, if I have offended you in some way, mm -hmm. please come tell me because I can't fix a problem I don't know about. And I'm willing to learn in this moment and do what I need to do to communicate better with you. Right. You're so giving an it, explanation, it's not, about, not an excuse. I just want to correct. make sure I'm saying I'm that out loud because you said scapegoat. And like most of the time, it seems like we're making excuses when really we're giving no, explanations. Given an explanation yeah. or a reason. That's it's not a reason. Life. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. It's a reason. It's not an excuse. This is why this happened. But I understand if it wasn't the correct thing that needed to happen right. in this moment. And I'm willing to learn from that situation. Yes. But I am telling you why it happened so we can both <clears throat> understand and move forward. There's That's no excuse the whole for point Nick, of growth. That, That's true. <laughs> that, that reminds me of um, like when I first got the position that I am in, I, I outright told my boss, I said, just so you know, a lot of times I, I feel people think I'm arguing with them. Like it just reminded me of like, it's not, it's an explanation, yeah. not an excuse. The whole, I told her, I'm like, if I have a question about what you're saying, like if I'm question, like if you say something and I'm saying like, well, why, like, why do we do that? If mm -hmm. I don't know the why I'm not going to get it. Right. And so, or I'm not going to do it. Like, it, well, we do this certain thing. Okay, but why? We do it the certain way. Okay, but why? Like me asking is not me arguing with you against it. Right. It's just, I want to know why. And it's like, I just need to be told why in order to, for me to get, basically in order for me to do it, mm -hmm. I need to know the reasoning behind it. You can't just tell me, oh, we've always done it this way. That's not a reason. <laughs> no, like, no, so, it's not. Right. It's, it's, and so I told her, I explained to her, she's like, oh, I'm the, she's like, oh, I'm the same way. I'm like, good, because it's like, I've got all my life, I've had bosses, especially the boss that I had right before her in the same building yeah um i like every time i would question something she'd be like well this is like she'd get mad yeah like, oh yeah I'm, as if you're questioning not, her authority so like i'm not yeah. questioning your authority yeah. i just need to know why this is the way it's done i need right. to know right like what what's the reasoning behind it and right. i need a reason it, more so than you're my boss yeah, yeah. Right. like i like uh, i thought like i just like authority figures it's not like i'm going against authority it's like i just need to know mm the reason for it. And right. so that's the whole like explanation, not excuse sort of thing. And so luckily my it helps now my brain it. get past the demand avoidance function. Yes. Preset mm -hmm. in there for, from the, from the tism. There is Holy a preset shit, yes. function in here yes. called demand avoidance. And yeah. when you give me a reason that then my brain can send to demand avoidance and mm -hmm. go, Nope, there's a good reason for this. Turn off. Now it'll turn that function off. And I'm more likely to complete the task in a timely manner and without begrudging thoughts mm -hmm. the whole time. Like, Absolutely. It will get done and because you've, did you deactivated the demand avoidance portion of my brain that was put in there at birth? I mean, are you okay? Just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> you doing fine right now? <laughs> you look a little angry. <laughs> Steve's like, it's getting too serious. Let's turn this around. Turn this around. Well, shit around. Uh, Fuck. Real, We've real, landed in serious bay. Go back real to Real fucking comedy, quick. Please. Something I just figured out the other day about me and Steve. And and you know what, man? You're right, because me and you, you said something a minute ago, and it's been stuck in my fucking brain. Excuse me. Um, you're absolutely right. Me and you used to argue a lot. But one of the reasons why is because we were trying to translate shit into the NT world. But the second we started doing this podcast, our fucking bitching at one another decreased like a motherfucker. And something I recently found out to transition back into us again I have more PDA than he does, right? I've got a stronger sense of PDA than he has, but he has a stronger RSD than I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, well, you took that test. Like I, I definitely have a stronger yeah. RSD. You know what I mean? So. And, but my PDA is way up, right? Like this motherfucker can stay on task for this fucking podcast and make videos and posts and all that shit. And like, he's good. Ooh, I got my list of shit. I can do my list of shit. I make the list and go, yeah. Right. Same. But the. Same. But when it comes to talking to people or emailing people, even though he's a better writer than I am, so I actually ask him to do it. But like, I have no problem emailing you and hearing, I don't want to do your podcast. I'm like, cool, later. And I can move on to the next one because I'm okay dealing with somebody not liking me because I've accepted fuckers ain't going to like me. And I automatically Same. assume you're not going to like me up front. So I just I engage do. with you with that assumption. I do have a problem with... um authority though 
like maybe when, PDA a little bit, but it's, mm-hmm. it's big. Like I don't like being told what to do a lot of the times. And I also don't, I don't, I have a distrust of people with power or authority. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, kind of like why part of you as a human being, I just don't yeah. like, I think that most often people who have power tend to abuse it. And that's why I don't, I don't trust them. And I know it's not always true, yeah. but it's true yeah. a lot of times. And I'm always skeptical. I'm very skeptical. And I've had a lot of bad personal experiences with people who have authority or have power. Where did that yeah. come from? Considering what I just said, PDA. Uh, I still don't get it. Oh no, got it. Okay, because people with power tell you, you mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. that you don't have a problem with authority figures so much, and then I'm sure Me, his brain yeah, jumped to, "Well, I, I do." So uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, I, like, I see where he went there. Um, even just like even like local governments and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like. Yeah, just like people, any level of power you yeah, fucking destroy. It's distrust. like in a power chip. Um, well, I had yeah. this uh, experience once. I went to the city hall and I had a parking ticket. And I had a parking ticket while I was serving jury and jury duty. And the court said, oh, well, we'll take care of the ticket for you. We'll get rid of it. Mm-hmm. They never did. Um, at the time that I got the ticket, uh, I was really broke and short on cash. I didn't have a lot of money. So the ticket, even though it wasn't a lot of money, it was a lot of money to me at the time. Yes. And I wrote to the city yeah. hall and told them the situation. And I told them that I was going, I told them my whole situation. So I told them I was have, you know, my personal situation and yeah. what happened with the court and everything. Right. I went down there because they ignored me. Uh-huh. I went down to pay it. And they, the ladies at the office were reading my email out loud while I was waiting in line and laughing at me. <gasps> oh. oh, wow. And so stuff like that. But that's not, that's only one experience I've had. But I've had multiple experiences like that where people who are who are in positions of power especially like people who work for um unelected positions people uh-huh. in bureaucratic positions yeah. where they're given a certain level of power authority and they're not elected and they feel like they can do whatever the fuck they want because there's no, no accountability and you're just a citizen who's a peon and they can do whatever they want yeah. and they don't a lot sometimes they don't have the authority to make any judgment calls that that is a true statement and if they do they don't give a fuck anyway right so like right. if you get a ticket and let's say the ticket uh, really maybe you shouldn't you don't really deserve the ticket for one reason or another. Sure. But, but you know, they're just like, oh, fuck you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they don't give a shit because it doesn't actually affect their fucking day. Right. And the problem when you have um, anybody who's in a position of power, like if you're a bureaucracy uh-huh. it, specifically. Yeah, yeah. There's no one to hold you accountable because ta- t- the taxpayers aren't electing you. Right. You're put into power by someone else. And you have no competition. It's not like yeah. if if McDonald's is serving me shitty food, I can go over to Burger King. I have no choice but to use these services that are provided to me by the state. Yeah. And so okay. I'm not like I understand that certain things are necessary and all that. But that's why I kind of like lean libertarian mm-hmm. in a lot of ways because I've had all these bad experiences with people in the yeah. government who are just treating me like shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like we you're supposed to work for us you're supposed to work for the people we yes. pay taxes we we pay your salary and then you treat us like shit so i will say though too is those people not politicians i'm talking about the civil servant worker who like the those ladies, yeah we're just right? like fuck you they deal with yeah. so many people in a day and not to give them an excuse to laugh at you because there's no excuse for that but a lot of those people deal with so many self-entitled citizen sea unts who like what the fuck like nobody deserves to treat a person at a job like they get treated because some self-entitled taxpayer shows the fuck up i get our tax money pays their salaries by the way those three people should not have laughed at you i'm gonna say it for the second time but like dmv workers right i get why they're so fucking jaded and so fucking demotivated to like rush their fucking jobs to help you get through the line i get that people are so self-entitled when they go to the fucking dmv or rmv like we call it a fucking rmv here um i like it's a person at a counter they are the lowest level employee at that fucking facility they didn't make any of the goddamn policies of why you're pissed off Stop treating them as if they owe you something because your tax dollars pay their salary. So fucking what? We all pay God. She fucking pays her own salary. She's paying fucking taxes, right? Like, and the reason why I'm specifying a female employee is because I specifically had a moment at the Connecticut DMV uh, where they they have this big open room, a whole bunch of chairs, and you're watching a board with numbers go by. And I'm sitting in the chair listening to a, a ton of people walk up to this woman's window and, like, bitch at her because they had to stand 
they had to sit and wait for their number three times today because you people needed one more fucking phone bill from me. She didn't make that policy. She didn't do anything but sit her ass in a chair behind a counter and tell you what you needed for her to be able to process it. She right. didn't force you to sit here three times in one day. You could have come back the fuck tomorrow. Or maybe you couldn't because you have to go to work tomorrow, but that's not her problem again. But you're going to give her that attitude. Mm -mm. Sorry to jump on that. Sorry. It's just that that bothers me when people like when you bitch at the barista at Starbucks because 13 people are standing in front of you in line. It's not her fucking fault. You're already running late for work, but you got to have your fucking coffee. It's not her fucking fault. It's not his fucking fault. Who's standing back there? Sorry, I get really bitchy when people <clears throat> fucking act self Yeah, but I've, I've had, uh, I've never come in and like been like, well, do you know who I am or anything like that? I've never been No, like I that. don't mean it like that. It's just some but people actually say the words, I pay your salary. Yeah. And like, I've that's self-entitled that bullshit. But I've had people just treat me like crap or like general incompetence too. Yeah, like yeah I well, went to, the incompetence. I, I went to city, city Hall once to pay a tax bill and they uh -huh. sent me to another building. Went yeah. to that building. Uh, by the way, I, I was taking time off work that day to go pay it. Went down. They sent okay. me to another building. I went to that building. Said, no, you need to go back to City Hall. Went back to City Hall. They said, no, you need to go back. To I'm like, what the? I, said, I went back and forth four times before I finally get to pay the bill. Yeah. <clears throat> because they kept telling me like, oh, you need to go see this person. But like, I just just tell me what I need. Like, you right, sent right. me back and forth and I didn't get anywhere. Right. Back and forth. They kept sending me to another person between like uh, buildings that were like 10 minutes apart. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? No, uh, absolutely agreed. Could they have done a better job to direct you in the right direction? Absolutely, they could Nobody have. Nobody wanted to actually try to solve the problem for me. They just kept right. pointing me to somebody else. Well, because in their estimation, as long as you're not standing in front of them, they did their job. So well, it's I just, don't get enough. I don't get paid enough to deal with this shit. Yeah, no matter how I much wasn't somebody rude pays to you, any of them. Say that I wasn't rude to them. No, I, I started to get annoyed after I had spent like three hours yeah. going back and forth. I'm like, I just want to pay this fucking bill. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. So I will say that like his issue with authority actually has caused tension mm. with me and him. So at some point in our comedy group, it, I kind of became like de facto fucking in charge somehow or some shit or at least by a majority of the people. And we kind of came into conflict because he started seeing the way I was talking as being his boss. And I had to God. reassure him, I am not your fucking boss. Like we started this group together. Like we right. have always talked about things together. Me, him and my partner have always discussed every decision we've ever made in the group together. Neither one of us have ever made a decision without the other one. And so he's always been right there, my equal, my partner in everything. But because other people were looking to me in that de facto position, like I didn't say, can I be the boss? By no fucking means. <laughs> but we had that conflict with each other because his distrust of fucking authority, his his rebellious, angsty nature, if you will. Right. I I'm just, so emo, geez. what, what? Say that again. So you're so, it's so emo, geez. It's right. Emo Be right more here. like punk. Yeah. Yeah. More like punk. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's the original punk movement, right? Uh, step against authority just purely because it's authority. What gives you the fucking right? I didn't put you in charge, right? That kind of idea. At the yeah. same time, I also know that I walk in a room and I don't necessarily mean to do this. I walk in a room with an air of authority. Not that I have any necessarily, but I walk in a fucking room as if my ass can make some decisions. He's like, do you know who I am? Yeah, like I walk in the room that way and I don't necessarily mean to, but that's just kind of how I come across to people that like Nick just thinks he knows everything. Oh, Nick just thinks he can tell people what to do. No, I'm actually making a suggestion. Why don't we do this? I'm not telling nobody to do shit. I thought you, you but, came across because you got turned on by playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> I get the know it all thing a lot too. I had to visualize that, that fucking joke. Nikki, uh, Nikki, that reminds me of like when we did like Scott's wedding, you kind of like took over, not in a bad way. You like took over like when we were decorating everything. You're like, mm. okay, just if you have any questions, just come to me. It's fine. I'll, I'll just direct you to do what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. I got, I was so yeah. ready for one of those people who didn't know me to be like, who the fuck is this bitch? And why is she here running shit? But like, I just, because I'm very like back to the work thing and like all that, yep. because I'm very, I see an opportunity for something to get done or I see mm -hmm. a problem that needs solved and I just jump in and do it. I, that 
it has, you know, it's, it's bad and it's good. And in this moment for him, I saw my two friends who had an issue going on, which is their tablecloths at their wedding didn't fit the fucking tables. And we had three hours to set this bitch up and be done before rehearsal. And I said, fuck everybody. I'm, I'm in charge now. We're going to make this happen. I grabbed Amanda. I said, this is what we're fucking doing. She's like, I'm down. Let's go. We confronted his partner and we were like, listen, this is what needs to happen. Don't even tell me no. We're paying for it. We're going to go make it happen. And we literally went and made it fucking happen. And we threw this wedding together so fucking fast. Like, it was so quick. That's just what I do. I just solve the fucking problem. I just get in there and get it done. But that's what I again, do. that's like... Again, that, another that validating bad, right? fucking moment. Because I've yeah, always I, shit on myself for bad. doing that. For stepping in and just trying to get it done. I've always shit on myself for that attitude. But like, I'm not the only fucking one. And it's literally yeah, for well, the same reason. How many times did I say, Amanda, I hope he's not going to be this, mad at me. I my, feel like this needs to happen. Like, right. And I did too. I'm like, oh, I hope he's not upset. Like I'm, yeah. and I apologize several times. Like, I'm sorry. I just kind of jumped in and took action. He was like, yep. no, I'm glad you did. Thank God you did. Because I didn't know what, the, what else to do. Because so, it like, got But done. I did several times apologize. Cause I'm like, someone's going to be pissed off. Yep. That I just like, feels like I just re- took like ramrodded over everybody uh-huh. else's well, wants and needs. But ramrodded? It's, it's kind of like, it's. <laughs> the fuck I don't know. expression is that? Road. I don't know. Fucking. Okay. Yep. Like a ramrod. It's, it's kind of like, know. it's kind of like a ramrod. Bad. Okay. From a gun, like World War II. The oh, was, 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 oh, fucking yeah. Chevy gunpowdery thing. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amanda? <laughs> oh, I was going to say, like, at my job, <laughs> I'm not like a supervisor or anything. Like, I'm like above people, but I'm not their boss, if that makes sense. Like, you're above I, them because you're just I better than a, them. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Yes. I am. I even sit on a pedestal. There you um, go. So, you go. the, uh, so, but they'll come to me and then like I'm with like the whole venting versus are you wanting to vent or you want a solution? So I got into the point where I'm just like, so are you just wanting me to listen to you or are you wanting me to tell you how to fix it? Because right. you ranting at me right now. It's I take like I'm I'm a very like actually like a passive person. So usually like with you and um with you guys, how you kinda like one of you kind of became the de facto leader. For me, like Nikki is the de facto leader. Like she's more about taking charge where I'm just like I'll do the things you want me to do. Like I will do everything you ask of me, but I don't like making decisions. I don't like being in charge. I'm a very passive person. (laughs) I, by the way, I know full well, he can see me on the TV in front of me. I know full well, he can see me doing this shit. And I love the fact Mm -hmm. he's ignoring me because it's way fucking funnier when he does it. By the way, Amanda, everything you just described, You and Steve are the equivalencies. Me and Nikki are the equivalencies. How many times? Yeah, I can make decisions, yeah, you, you though. I just no, don't no, always it's like not, to. And it's not that Amanda can't make decisions. It's just yeah, when it comes to when the two of them are next to each other, evaluating a moment, Nikki's going to go, bam, I got something. Let's go do it. And Amanda's going to go, all right, cool. And they're going to fucking go and do it. That's how we do things a lot, mm-hmm. too. And like generally, instead of voicing to the group, when you have an idea for something, you immediately text me or or message me on Messenger and go, hey, dude, I really want to do this. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think people will get it done? What's up with it? And I and I go, okay, do you want me to bring it up? And you go, well, do you think it's a good idea? And I'm like, yeah, fucking right. And then very next rehearsal, I immediately tell everybody. Chats too. What? Mm-hmm. That's, that's got- why I do my group chats too. Like I'll, I'll, I'll message the person, one, one of the people directly. I'm like, okay, what do you think about this? And they're like, yeah, that sounds good. And then I'll message it to the group or have him message it to the group. Right. And so me on the other hand, I just think it and say it. And I'm assuming Nikki is very similar to that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're fucking us, man. Wait, no, let me say that a different way. Yeah, no, absolutely. There is. You're absolutely right. And and there are times where his way is fucking way better. Like, there have been times where my approach of bleh onto people has not come across very well. And and I would say even well, in our comedy like, group. Well, it's kind of like reading the room. It's like the whole going back to the being offended thing. It's yeah. like when you get to a group of people and it's like, okay, will they be offended if I try taking charge mm-hmm. or will they want me to just kind of like, kind of like delete it? Like, you know, I'm trying to can't phrase this correctly, but basically just kind of a part of the group and like be more of a collective or they do they need someone to take charge? Right. Like, do they want me to be direct? Do they need me to do this? Like, because I've made coworkers cry for me just being direct and like me offending them, basically. I should be so happy that I've done it too, but I am. (laughs) Right. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm fucking so happy. I'm hearing somebody else say I've made a coworker cry. It's so validating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So yeah, I, I've literally made a, I, made, I literally made coworkers cry because yeah. um, I just was blunt with them, and it's like I wasn't trying to be rude. It's just I just basically spoke what was on my mind, and they right. went off and cried about it. I'm like, I'm okay. Right. You can do that if you want. That's your. Yeah. I've made I, I've made doves cry. Just, you have made doves cry. <laughs> yes, you have. Thank you, Prince. Um. <laughs> Fuck that that fucking like flatlined my fucking thought process right there. I think wow. we need to uh, uh I, I, circle around towards the end of this. Yeah, we do. I think it yeah. is getting close to that time. It's probably close to that time for you two as well. Um, I mean, we we mm-hmm. do have a comedy show that we have to get to tonight. Um, and actually it's getting super close to I'm, that time. I'm headlining. You are. You are. By headlining, he means we're gonna shove him in a trunk so he's not seen for two hours. I thought you were going to say I'm standing, I'm manning the glory hole tonight. <laughs> Thank God you're the one in the fucking porta potty tonight. Get it? Uh, like headlining? Thank God. Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Bad joke. Okay, so let, let's do a wrap up. We all agree that we've all been treated less than decently or less than fair just because we look, speak, sound, behave in a way in which is not considered the norm, but it's just the way we are and we have no ill intention behind it, correct? We've all We're heard offensive. that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. We're offensive. Right. We are offensive, but it's only offensive to fuckers who don't want to look beyond the surface. Right? Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's fuckers who don't go, hey, uh, Nikki, what'd you mean? You know what I mean? Like that's that's what's missing in all of this is we have to do that for them because we know there's something about us where we might like, have missed ask. something. Right. Mm-hmm. Just fucking just ask, ask me. If you know. yep. Nick, well, why are you getting so loud? Claws of fucking mania. I'm not angry about anything. I just fucking get all uppity sometimes. Just ignore that shit. <clears throat> Nick, why does your face look like you just threw up? It has nothing to do with the way your makeup looks. Not at all. <laughs> no, uh, like I think that's I need a, I need a soundboard for moments like this. I need, I'm going to get a plug in. Oh, where I get effects. loud? We have one and I am in charge of it. <laughs> Wait, it's hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Let me just check. Amanda, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't look you don't look okay to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm dying actually on the inside. Okay, yeah, I mean, she does have an yeah. innate ability to sit so still. I thought her internet connection fucking failed. Uh like just fucking <laughs> So how is it been, how like, is it being yeah. a Morgendorfer? A what? Wait, what? A what? Daria. Isn't her last name Morgan? Oh, Daria. Oh. Okay, because oh, yeah. oh, okay. I'm like, what? I just always know her as Daria. <sighs> But well, who the excuse me. Apparently, I know more about Daria than you. Yeah, like who the fuck remembers sorry. Daria's last name? Because La- Lauren's been watching it lately. Oh, uh, that's so. why you remember. Okay. She's been rewatching so, all of Daria. With all of that being said, does anybody have any final thoughts uh, about us being offensive or being considered offensive in a world of fucking assume, assumptive people? I almost used the c word. I think that you again. should have another sandwich with lots of hummus on it. <laughs> what i think anybody yeah, got I a final fucking assuming, opinion what i think assuming makes an ass out of you and me i i enjoy that phrase um i think their assumption doesn't make an ass out of me at all it makes them a fucking ignorant bastard go ahead like, Agreed. i'm the perfect mm. one okay i'm the perfect one. i like that better <laughs> right like because honest to god every time out of you i rarely make assumptions about what you're thinking but i definitely will speculate the shit out of it gonna, and if i'm wrong yeah. tell me don't I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna mail Amanda a sign that she can put on her door at work, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be a flip sign. So one side will say yes, dot dot dot, I'm okay, and then <laughs> the other side is like, no, I'm not okay. She can flip it. <laughs> Like, Make like, it as green like a, and as like a and say clean and dirty. Just flip it around. <laughs> yep. as clean and dirty. <laughs> Please don't tap like on the magnet. glass. You know, you know, Please we might be able to market glass. those to autistic people right there. Are you autistic? Do you hurt. work? Here's a sign. You just put it around your mm-hmm. neck. You have an office with a door. Yeah, a sign for you. It just wait. I, I like Steve. Wear it around your neck. No, I'm actually pissed. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. This is just my face. That's right. You need a T-shirt mm-hmm. that says that. Yeah. Uh, yes, oh I'm my fine. Good this is just my face. It's like the the kids who are autistic and go trick or treating. They have the blue pumpkin. We yes. need something like that. Right. We need something yeah. to identify us. But I think know, maybe I think it would be a bad idea if we had an arm. That, that band. becomes Nazi. That no. becomes a Holocaust. Yeah, we're getting into Holocaust into territory, Nazi territory here. Mm-hmm. 
We need identifying badges to tell us that we're not, in fact, neurotypical. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I will not wear now. a star on my chest at all. No, thank you. Or a okay. pink triangle. Sorry. Yeah, or a pink triangle. Yes. I, w- I will not have either one of them. We're going to send you to infinity camp. That's what we're going to call but, it. Uh, but unfortunately, all they have to do is put five people around me and I'm going to do this. As long as it's not a puzzle piece, okay? <gasps> yeah. My God, don't bring up a puzzle piece now. We what could about talk about some Jesus shit Christ. about that puzzle piece because fuck it doesn't mean people are missing something. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a whole big we could yeah, have a whole yeah, ass yeah. episode about that, people being pissed off about that. Yeah, we we could we could talk a thousand miles to Tuesday about some of the misinformation. We need a terminology about that. episode. We, we do, we do. I actually agree with that. We break down terminology yeah, yeah. around autism. Uh, I agree with that, actually, uh, especially because we all probably carry some, like, fucking not great definitions about some shit. Uh, I guarantee. Oh, sure. um, so anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to the On the Spectrum Neurodivergent Convergence Podcast. Yes, it's a big ass name <laughs> because it's two podcasts <laughs> in one. In fact, we spoke for like two fucking hours. We literally could do a part one and part two on both of our podcasts with it. But sure. if you liked, disliked, uh, agreed, disagreed, or just want to add to our conversation, feel free to put a comment on either one of our and podcast if, social media sites, preferably on Spotify, because bitches, it helps us. If so you've listened to comment. the whole episode and you've gotten to this point, yeah. <laughs> please leave a comment saying that Nick is an asshole. Yeah, please, please yeah. fucking put a comment that I'm an tell? asshole they at this point. Anyway. Holy yeah. shit. Make, like two make fucking the hours. comment that Nikki is a bootleg boss lady. Yes, or bootleg or boss lady. Boss bitch. Yes. Hashtag ask if a man is okay. Ask if a man is okay. Hashtag yeah, Amanda's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Amanda, are you okay? Are you okay, Amanda? <laughs> oh, okay. oh! Yes, yes. Awesome Alien reference. Ant Farm. Off, awesome reference. All the right, best so of that song. um, seriously, you think that's the best version of that song? It's the version I grew up on. Okay, Steve, we've got to stop Therefore, talking to the these best. people. We got to stop talking to them. <laughs> Just listen, like I, right I do like the Michael. I like the Michael Jackson song. Don't worry. I do. Even though he's very problematic human, I do like his music. Hey, you know what? Let's separate the skill from the human being. Or I, yeah, let's, same with J.K. Rowling. It's you could say the same thing about J.K. Rowling. But let's not try to do that for R. The, Kelly because his fucking Harry songs Potter were about her. children. So let's not do that for right, him. I get it. I get it. Um, anyway, beyond that point, that means- thank you very much. My- you did it again. Whoa. I got sorry. I was about to say, Amanda right. just got pissed off and left. I brought up R. Kelly. She was like, fuck this shit. I'm out. My no. mind, so let me know. Oh, good God. I have that on our soundboard. <laughs> All right. So, um, ladies, thank you very much for joining us today. We were really happy to be on your podcast as well because we're doing the mutual show. But uh, mm-hmm. once again, if you have anything to say about this episode, please put it in our comments. Please reach out to either set of our podcasts to talk to us, to let us know what's going on. And if you want to see more episodes of us joining together, making our tism powers combined, let us know. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. We need to figure out what our rings would be. We would re. Yo, God, yeah. That'd be great. Captain Planet, this shit. Captain Planet. Goodbye.